I was just saying, the heck with it. This guy could be slow playing a queen. No, he was a value bet, 520. Pretty good value bet, over a half million. Gutsy. And Farazza got two pair. And you have to know your opponent's not going to bet two aces on the river here. Ooh. Faraz makes the call. Not crazy about this call. What can your opponent have you can beat that he can bet on the river? Wow. Curiosity kills Faraz right there. Pays it off to the chip leader, Taylor Parr, as he extends his chip leader. Yeah, you see the look in Faraz's face says it all. Gosh, he outdrew me on the turn. I've been saying for years that if there's one tournament I could pick to win, it would be this one. I'm a bounty. This is my hometown. If there was a tournament I'd want to win, it would be this one. San Jose, California, my hometown, playing the Bay 1 shooting star. I love this tournament. It would mean a ton to win this event. San Jose is my hometown, so this tournament is always special, and I am going to take it down one year. I'm, I'm out here grinding for a reason, and that's to win a WPD title. I feel like I've accomplished a lot in the poker world, and that's the one thing I haven't done. Yeah, Faraz, the WPD Player of the Year back in Season 8. Also one of two remaining bounties left in this tournament. Well, he's a great guy, very stylish. Faraz Jaka, can he do it here tonight? The Andes are going up to 10,000. The blinds are 30 and 60,000. Action on Faraz, quick fold by him. 120. There's the other bounty right there. Sorrel Mizzy from Canada going to raise it up here with King Queen of Spade, 120,000. Into Isaac Barron, who's got a King Eight of Clubs. He's going to get aggressive with it. He raises to 275. Jake out, Taylor out. But Sorrel going nowhere. He's made the call. So these two guys will compete. King Queen versus King Eight, and the flop is a King Ten Deuce. And both players have flop kings. Sorrell has him out kicked. Sorrell checks. After three betting it before the flop, Isaac checks on the flop. They go check check seven of diamonds on the turn. Sorrell must think he's in front right now. Sorrell is in front, and he does make the bet. 375. But he is going to be called by Isaac. Uh, how can you not call a top pair here? Got to do it. River card, four diamonds. It does put three diamonds on the board, but be a backdoor flush if somebody made him. All right. Well, Sorrell going all in with two kings. Just feels like they're the best hand. In fact, they are. But now, if you're in Isaac's seat, you check top pair on the flop. Wow, what do you do here? Tough decision for Isaac Barron. He three bet before the flop, the guy called. I bet the turn, he moved in on the river. Isaac Barron with a decision right now. Do you make Sorrell rich? This is not a guy you want to double up here. Isaac lays it down. What a good lay down by him. Terrell Mitzi takes down that pot. There's the Ublo watch. The champion will take home. What a great timepiece that is. And there's the WPT Champions Cup and the bread. All going to this champion tonight. 1.2 million. Well, as great as all these players are, none of them have won a WPT title. Action on Faraz. Alan. Pair of fours for Faraz. He says all in. Sorrell and Isaac go away. You know, Jake Baisley, former college basketball player and coach, looks down as two tens. I've had a couple of nice game winners in my career, and I always wanted to take that last shot. I want the burden to be on my shoulders. I'm all in. He goes over the top all in. Taylor out, and they're going to show the hands. It's a showdown. Aloha. Aloha. Let's do it. Yeah, there you see Jared Jaffe rooting his buddy Jake Baisley on here. Well, it's tens and fours. It's highway patrol. If Faraz doesn't win, it'll be over and out for him. Matt, you ready for your line? There's Matt oh, Savage no. circling the table like a vulture. Here's the flop. Flop's not good for Faraz. 7-3 deuce. Take a five ball. So much potential. Faraz needs help. He needs to catch a four to take the lead or two runners to make a straight. Otherwise, he'll be our fifth place finisher.
Four. Four. Look, you just want to You know how to surf? No sweats. You know how to surf? Do I look like I know how to surf? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Four. Crowd on its feet. Here comes the turn. Ooh. It's a five. Ooh. So now he gets some more outs. Made for TV. A lot of outs. Ten outs. Let's go. Pete. Ace on the Pete. river. Pete. Pete. I fell a jackpot. You know, an ace, a six, or a four now is what Faraz needs to stay alive. Looks cool, calm, and collected. Let's go to the river. Will Faraz stick around? It is a jack. So just like that, for us, Jocka is going to be out in fifth place. Jake Baisley, the former basketball player, not only makes the shot, he gets an and one for knocking out a bounty. You got this, too. Oh, snap! <laughs> Do I get a t-shirt? And I'll get a t-shirt. Oh, wow. $2,500? It's $2,500 for the bounty. It's just so much more than just the cash and the prize. Wow, cash money at the table to make you look like a boss? I it's like it. bounty, it's ego, it's all about that. That's all right, fine. Take it out, man. All right, Faraz, always a gentleman, though. Gives the t-shirt. Thank you. Did you guys make it legit? Is it 25? <laughs> I didn't count. Well, Faraz Jocka, one of the classic players, season eight WPT player of the year, gonna take home 216,000. Let's go hear his story. Faraz, not really what you were looking for tonight. How disappointed are you? Uh, I mean, I'm disappointed that I didn't win, didn't go further, but at the same time, I'm happy with my play. When do you think we'll see you uh, take one of these down? Um, you know, I'm not going to stop playing these anytime soon, so hopefully at another event this season. All right. I'm sure we'll see you back. Yep. With Faraz Jaka out in fifth place, it's the final four going after the title when the Bay 101 shooting star continues. Tonight's episode is sponsored by Ublow, the official watch of the World Poker Tour. Hey everyone, I'm Jeannie. And I'm Kat. And we're here at Bay 101 where the fans are gathering to watch. Let's go see what they have to say about poker and Club WPT. And where are you from? I'm from San Jose. I'm from Toronto, Canada. Do you watch often? Uh, yes, all the time. Aww, <laughs> a fan. <laughs> we like Garrett Greer and I love Joe Sorok. Ooh, someone has a crush. True, true. Have you ever heard of Club WPT? I have. Yeah. All right, do you play on it? Not yet. You should go on clubwpt.com because it's free to play. And we give away $100,000 in cash and prizes every month. You can actually win your way into the tournament by going on Club WPT and playing. Oh, perfect. You can even play against me. Now, what do you think about that? I don't know if I can beat you. Rare. <laughs> I'm going to go on um, Club WPT and win. I'm going to go on Club WPT and win. I'm going to go on Club WPT and win. I'm going to go on Club WPT and I'm going to win. <laughs> With $100,000 worth of cash and prizes up for grabs every month, isn't it time you got in the game yourself? Visit clubwpt.com and play unlimited poker for fun and for free. All right, we're back here on the World Poker Tour. At the Bay 101 shooting star, the chip leader right now, Taylor Parr, 8.5 million. The youngest guy at the table is doing it right now. Action on the chip leader, Taylor Parr, looks down at Ace Deuce offsuit. That's good enough to raise. Gonna make it 120,000 to go. Sorrell out, Isaac not gonna play. And now Jake Baisley looks down at a queen right, so nine. He's got money in there. He will make this call. Defending out of the big blind. And a good defense it looks like so far as it comes Jack 9-6. Jake making two nines and checks. Taylor checks right behind him. Turn card, Taylor picks up deuces there. Taylor well aware that those kind of middling cards could possibly help his opponent. Jake bets on the turn here with the two nines, but Taylor's going to make the call with the two deuces, 150,000. Okay, and the river card is an ace deuce. Oh, man, that gives Taylor two pair of aces and deuces. How good is Taylor running at this final table? Ace on the river to give him the best hand. Jake is going to check, and here comes Taylor. Taylor 420,000, and Jake's saying to himself, well, this guy really cold on the turn with just ace high. I'm going to pay him off my two nines, but he is not going to like the result. He knows he was outdrawn on the river there. 
Not a good feeling. Yep, yep. No apology, though, by Taylor. That is poker. That's the way you do it. Taylor extends the chip lead. Very cool, calm, and collective. Just peels right off. Huh? Just peels right off. Yeah. I know you like that 420 Yeah, that was, that was logical, man. That was a very logical bet. All right, we're going to the felt. Sorrell with a quick fold. Now Isaac with King Queen. And he will move it to 135 to go. Jake Basie looking down at Pocket Kings. Because he's picked up Pocket Kings, DraftKings will put $1,000 into his DraftKings account. He has re-raised Taylor's out. Isaac calling. Good luck. Kings versus King Queen, and the flop is 4-4 four, four, deuce. No help for Isaac. Jake will come out with a bet, swinging away at 325. Well, Isaac is making the call with King Queen. I know he's got the Queen of Hearts working back to a flush, but maybe he's just calling the float here. If his opponent ever checks, he's going to bet. Eight of clubs on the turn. 600. And Jake is going to continue to pound away. 600,000 with the Kings. And if you're Isaac, do you get the memo? Yes, you do. Well, Isaac gives it up. Jake Baisley taking down that pot. So the former hoopster liking that one. <laughs> there you see the chip lead of Taylor Parr. 9.1 million in chips. Isaac Barron in second with 5 million. Jake Baisley in third with 4.4 .4 million. Sorrell Mitzi, the Canadian, down to 2.5. Right back at it we go. It's going to be on Jake. Picking up King 9. And just won the last pot, so going to raise this one. Makes it 120,000 to go. Taylor Parr with a Queen 5. Oh, look at this. Now, Vince, I know he's the chip leader. I know he's on the button. He's got position. I know he's aggressive. I guess you had all those up. And you just three bet on the button with the queen five off suit. Into the short stack, Sorrell, who has a king queen. Well, Sorrell with the best hand, but it's been raised and re raised in front of him. But look at this. Sorrell is going to four bet here with a king queen, and it's the best hand. Isaac out, Jake out. Well, just an incredible feel by Sorrell, in my opinion. It's like he could read both his players and their weakness. Taylor can't play. Just four bet with that hand to take it down. Well done by Sorrell. This episode of the World Poker Tour is sponsored in part by DraftKings. If you like poker and sports, then you're going to love daily fantasy sports at DraftKings. Go to DraftKings.com, enter promo code WPT, and start playing today. I don't know what it is in the water here in San Jose, but the fans here are more excited than any place in the world that I've traveled to. And I've been all over Europe, Australia, you name it. And uh, this place right here in San Jose, they just look to poker and poker professionals in a, in a unique way. And I think a lot of that has to do with the effort that Bay 101 has made. Oh, rebuy. Oh, so close. Rebuy. The Bay 101 is tons of fun. Coming in as a bounty, it creates a totally new dynamic. They do a really great job of rolling out the red carpet for the players. Thank you. All right, come on in. Daniel, posing with fans. Yeah, welcome back to the World Poker Tour. Four players remain. And Mike, I remember when you were not only a bounty, but you made the final table here. Well, I did. That was a lot of fun. We've got one bounty left in this tournament. That's Sorrell Mitzi from Canada. But Taylor Parr, our chip leader right now, with 8.8 .8 million. And Isaac Barron with about 5 million in second. Jake Baisley in third, 4.2. <laughs> and Sorrell has now crossed the 3 million chip mark. Don't count him out. Action on Isaac. Quick fold by him. And Jake Baisley. 120. It's going to make it 120 to go with a jack 10. And he's on the button. Raising it up. Sorrell going to defend out of the small blind. He's got one of those little seductive hands. Four or five of spades. Let's see if he gets lucky with it. Now flop is queen three deuce. Sorrell with the open end straight draw. He's going to check. Comes a continuation bet by Jake. 
Sure, Sherrill's going to play. Will he check raise here? Nope, just going to call. Just hoping to hit the magic card. He's straight. Can he do it? No, king of hearts. Well, that gives Jake an open and straight draw. Sorrell is checked. So both players drawn to an open and straight. One the low straight, one the high straight. Right now, Jake has the best hand with Jack High, but because he's got that draw, he's firing another bullet, 375,000. Gonna make it tougher to draw that baby straight now. So Jake applying more pressure, and Sorrell doesn't want to take the risk. Doesn't want to gamble. By the way, this guy is a big gambler in real life. Loves the action. I've basically dedicated my entire life to playing poker. That's all I've been doing the last 10 years. I went to the Army Reserves when I was 16, and I did learn discipline, but unfortunately, as soon as I left, most of that <laughs> went out the window. I've been very blessed in that I've had a lot of really big scores through my poker career, but I've also had a very hard time keeping that money. I'm really hoping I could have a big result here, so I could prove to myself that I can hold on to money and that, um, you know, I'm not just this raging degenerate. <laughs> well, Sorrell certainly with another big chance to make a nice score tonight. Over 1.2 million goes to the winner. Here he looks down at ace five offsuit. He's going to raise it up here, makes it 130,000 to go. Isaac out, Jake now with a pair of sixes. He will make this call. Taylor going to take a rest. Let these two compete for it. Ace five versus pair of sixes. The flop comes king five, deuce, rainbow. Sorrell's flop middle pair with top kicker. Jake is checked, and Sorrell. And he is going to bet. Yeah, 140 bet. Yeah, but Jake hasn't beat with two sixes, and he's going to make the call. And we are going to the turn. And another five hits. That makes three of a kind for Sorrell. What a card. Now he's hoping his opponent's got a king in his hand. So he'll keep playing with him. Jake is checked. Sorrell going to fire yet again. In fact, 375,000. And we're at the point where Jake knows they can only beat a bluff. But he thinks the sixes might be good. He has made the call. River card is a three of hearts. Changes nothing. Now again, Jake checks the sixes. Sorrell. Now what's the right increment so you get your sucker to call? Seven twenty-five. Pretty hefty bet. Will that be the number? Because it's such a big bet, Jake has that look in his eye, or behind the sunglasses, I should say, that maybe the guy's bluffing. Nope, he's gone out. But Jake gives it up, and it turns out it's a good laydown. Sorrell Mitzi taking on that pot and climbing up the chip leaderboard. Northern California is home to some of the best and brightest poker players in the game. And now a new rising star is hard at work on the felt, putting her new business plan into action. I am a go-getter. If I decide to do something, I'm at it 100%. Go big or go home. Perfect. I opened six yogurt shops in Northern California. That was a huge, just like learning experience for me. With that, I was able to um, sell and earn some money. And I just decided, all right, get right in, jump into poker and give it a full-time shot. And here I am. Whee, I'm excited, let's do this. <laughs> I think that I'm a risk taker. And business is a risk, and so is poker. You definitely have your downfalls, and you just have to keep a positive attitude and build yourself back up. You can never be 100% happy unless you win it, but I am super proud of myself that I made it this far. I haven't won that title yet, but I'm going to. I know I'm going to. Pure monster sound. You have to hear it to believe it. Get yours today at monsterproducts.com slash WPT. Enter code WPT25 to get your special discount. 
We are right across the street from the Bay 101, and the girls are going to play. We've got Mike Sexton out here. I tell you, I got worn out walking across the street to get here. We're going to hear a little music out of the Monster Superstar speakers. They're fantastic. Okay. We're about to play some basketball. <laughs> <laughs> Shockingly decent, right? Game winner! We're playing physical out here today. Yeah! Well, it was an absolute miracle no one got hurt. <laughs> but you were pretty good, Mike. Well, thank you, Vance, but. We know you're the real player of the group, but how about the girls? Jeannie and Kat, they play very tough, very competitive. They were terrific. Okay, the Annie's are 10,000, blinds up to 40 and 80,000. Here we go. Action on Taylor Parr. Yeah, Chip later looks down at two fours. Gonna raise it under the gun here. 160,000 to go. Into Sorrell. So well, this time has just a jack, eight of clubs. He's got a three bet on the button with this hand against the chip leader, 380,000. Isaac out. And Jake now with the pretty ace queen. 880. Wow, he's going to repop. What good timing by him. 880,000 by Jake Baisley here. Taylor mucking the fours very quickly. Sorrell going away. So a good play there by Jake. The hoopster in stroke right now, Vince. Yep, he was a college ball player. Great competitor, Jake Baisley. Now lives in Cincinnati, Ohio. Isaac Barron, you're looking at there. Also well known for his three-point shooting. Maybe those guys should get out on the court and settle this. Quick fold by Isaac. Jake won't play. Now Taylor. How much do you have? Just about three. Very strong ace, 10 of diamonds. That's the battle of the blinds here. And there's the raise, 200,000 to go. Sorrell with ace three. He is gonna make this call. And he knows Taylor could button raise with any two cards, so it calls him with the ace high here. And the flop is a nine, nine, 10. That's beautiful for Taylor. He flops two tens with ace kicker, and he's reaching out for betting chips. 215,000. Sorrell, of course, knows this guy would make a continuation bet with any two cards. So he's going to call him with the ace high. And if Taylor didn't hit, you might think Sorrell's hanging around with mid cards like that. Deuce of spades on the turn. And there's the pummeling, though, of Taylor saying, you're not going to get off cheap. No free cards. Sorrell has to go away. So many times you call somebody on the flop just thinking they're continuing betting, but when they bet again <laughs> on the turn, you rethink that strategy. <laughs> Wise fold by Sorrell there. Uh, the Andes are up to 15,000. Blinds 5,100. <laughs> Action on the Canadian. Sorrell, former Army man, now he dedicates his life to poker. He's got a nice hand. Ace, 10 of spades. Oh, and he's got about 18 big blinds here. Well, and he's going all in with him. Isaac behind him with a pair of fours has folded. Now Jake again with the ace queen. Well, just four betted a minute ago to 880 with ace queen. That worked for him. On. There you go. He's going all in here. Taylor ejects. They turn it up. Sorrell. In the deficit here, Jake Baisley out in front with the kicker. Ace queen versus ace 10. Tens are feeling real hot right now. Anyone full of tens? 10? No? 10? Queen? Queen? 10? Huh? No spa spades? Spades? spades. spades. <laughs> Jack queen cans? Out of spades. spades. Jack. Jake Baisley well out in front. Sorrell Mitzi's tournament life on the line. He's the last bounty left in this tournament. No one out of 10. No one out of one spade. Any queens? Queen? Queen five? One million. All right, I'll take that. Sorrell gets up on his feet. Let's go, baby! The superstar Railbirds. Queen ball. Loving this moment here at Bay 101. A little sweat. Let's do a little sweat. I agree with you. Give me the sweat. Don't do the queen 4-4. Four four. Let's just yeah, so Rails looking to get his name matched on that Champions Cup. Must suck out here to do it. Flop is a 
King 10, 8. He gets better than that. He hits 10s. After dominating his opponent a moment ago, Jake now has to outdraw his opponent. Needs a queen or a jack. Bartender, I'm about to shout at Jack. Jake looking a little punchy after that flop. But things can change on the turn. And now there's four spades as well. That's a good one. That's a good one. Which means Jake must catch a jack or a queen that's not a spade to win this pot. I like that card. <laughs> he thinks it's a good one? Oh. I like his mentality. Takes two of Jake's outs away from him. Okay, now Jake, a huge underdog on the river card. Let's see what appears. It's a nine of diamonds. Sorrell will double up after all. <laughs> Going in with the worst, coming out with the best. Four players remain at the Bay 101. Lots of celebration and partying. We're coming back for more on the World Poker Tour. <laughs> One continues here, four-handed poker. Jake Baisley emotionally drained, man. Just look at him at the table and his posture. Knows he'd have been in a strong second chip position with three players left. And his ace queen beat the ace 10. Now he's got to bounce back from four players left. Big jump in prize money right now. Next guy out gets 310,000, but third place, 461,000. Second place, 704,000. The winner, of course, gets over 1.2 million. So the difference between fourth and first place is 900,000. That is a big, big, big jump. And as we know, anything can happen in a shorthand poker game. Including a pair of nines for Isaac. That's what he's got. Let's see what he does. Yeah, he'll make it 200,000 total. Jake now with queen, nine of clubs. He will not play that. Taylor, the big chip leader with a king jack. Oh, wow. He's going to re-raise 515 total. Sorrell out. Much. Yeah, Taylor's got almost half the chips in play with four players left. And three bets it here to 515,000. All in. That's four million? Yeah. Uh, Isaac not backing down. Moving all in with the two nines. Yeah, Taylor can't take that heat. Isaac will win. Well, Isaac is learning how to play this Taylor par. He raises just come over the top of him, take the pot back away from him. Well, it helps when you have a pair of nines, too, to do it. So it's going to work for him right there. Action back on Taylor. Let's take a look at his card. See, queen eight. Well, he is relentless, Vince. Most people will just throw this hand right away under the gun. Taylor going to raise it to 200,000. Sorrell behind him with just a four deuce. Yeah, most players would throw this away too, especially after it got raised in front of him. 460. But Sorrell is gonna three bet here with the four deuce. He is gonna take a shot with absolute zip and pip. Well, he knows Taylor lost the last pot. He knows he three bets light and raises light. So he's just gonna three bet him here, even though he's just got a four deuce. Everyone has to fold. Nice play by Sorrell. The Canadian knows he sucked out to stay alive. And a lot of times you say to yourself, you know, if I get lucky like that, this could be my night. I'm going to take it down. It's not just luck. It's making it happen. When you have four deuces, and you take a pot like that, that is playing poker. OK, to the action. This time, he's got a suited connector, eight kind of clubs. Yep, that kind of hand you like to see a flop with. He's going to raise it up to 200,000 here. Isaac Barron from Menlo Park, California, a local here. He's got king 10. And he's going to raise. Folks, just look at the hands these people are three betting with time and time again at this final table. King Jack offsuits, four deuce offsuits, King tens. Jake and Taylor go out, and Sorrell's going to call. We're going to go to the flop. It's a queen 10 deuce. Well, Sorrell's got a gut shot straight draw. Backdoor flush draw. He's going to check. Isaac with tens. over 1.1 million in the pot. Isaac going to bet 375,000. Into Sorrell. Inside straight draw. Whoa. Now, when your opponent calls you with this kind of board, you think they either have a straight draw or queens with a weak kicker, maybe two tens also. Well, Sorrell could not connect five of spades on the turn, so he's got nothing. He checks again, but Isaac's going to slow down and check as well. Going to the river. Seven of spades. That's a great card for Isaac there because 
There was no straight possibility after that flop. Okay, well. There you go, check, check. Sorrell just waves the white flag by not betting on the river, just says, you take this pot, and Isaac happy to take it. Now, Isaac Barron came to this final table as the chip leader. Nothing much has gone right for him, but maybe winning that pot will put a little pep in his step again. There are 100,000 reasons to love ClubWPT.com. Because as a Club WPT VIP, you get the chance to win a share of $100,000 in cash and prizes every month. ClubWPT.com. Never lose a dime playing poker. Guaranteed. There are many ways to play a hand and perhaps even more ways to dissect it. Standing by is Tony Dunst, ready to break it down in the raw deal. Tonight, our final table is comprised of five of the best young players in the game. The only amateur to make the final table was Ravi Sundar, who was eliminated at the end of the last episode when he was caught bluffing for his entire stack. He tried to make a move to win that pot. He just got picked off by a top row. And while his bluff didn't work, watching Ravi play made me wonder, if you're the least experienced player at the table, is the best strategy to stay out of the fray or shoot back at the professionals? Let's break it down. After watching Ravi's hand against Taylor Parr, it's clear he believes in shooting back. Taylor raises the cutoff with 5-8, and Ravi called on the button with ace-8, a hand that most professionals would opt to raise or fold. Sorrell Mizzy made the call in the big blind, and the players went three-way to a jack-6-5 flop. Taylor bet out with bottom pair, and Ravi made another loose call with ace-high and no draw. Sorrell actually had the best hand and overcalled the flop with his top pair. Every player checked when the six paired on the turn, leading to a five on the river, which put two pair on the board. Sorrell checked for a third time, and Taylor made a bet with his full house. Just seconds later, Ravi announced all in. I'm all in. Sorrell quickly folded, and Taylor was left with a nauseating decision. Mm, man. Although I wasn't a fan of how Ravi played the early streets, his river bluff is pretty interesting. It's a credible line to take with sixes full, and Taylor knows that Ravi is loose enough pre-flop that he can call with many hands that contain a six. He's crazy, and crazy means you, you can always win. I think what really prevented Ravi from winning this hand was his stack size. If he had another half million to start the hand, I think his all-in probably wins the pot. Oh, man. Instead, Taylor was getting such a great price with his hand that he eventually made the call. All right, I call. Stay aside. So let's revisit our original question. Should Ravi be shooting back at the pros? Absolutely, because if you're always tight at tough tables, your opponents will know better than to pay off your bets. Ravi's bluff might not have worked this time, but if you're making bets that give pros this reaction... I think you're bluffing. Then you're giving yourself a chance to win. We definitely have a lot of heart, man. We can play with it, bro. Well, Ravi did show a lot of heart there, but the top pro, Taylor Parr, picked him off like a cherry on a tree, thought he was bluffing, and he was. But I'll tell you something, I miss that Ravi. <laughs> what a spectacular player, takes all kinds of risks. Oh, you just love action junkies. Ah, uh, he was great. Jake Baisley now has an A6. And he's they're not going to play it. Taylor with Jack-10. He's the chip leader, and he will certainly play this. On the button, in position, with chips. Aggressive player, gonna raise it, 200,000. Sorrell out, and now Isaac Barron with a king nine. Sometimes you hate to call raise with king nine, off suits, out of position against chip leaders, but against extremely aggressive players like a Taylor Parr is when he's got chips. You just have to make a stand sometimes or they will just push you all around. Flop is a queen, queen three. Isaac gonna check, and Taylor Parr now. Nothing on that flop. He doesn't care, 180 is bet. Going to make the continuation bet. But what a call here by Isaac. Just calling him with king high. Knows Taylor could be raising with any two cards. Continuing with any two. Calls him with king high and hits a king on a turn to take the lead. Now, there is three spades out there now. This also gives Taylor an open-ended straight draw. Well, most people, once they made that draw, will be happy just to get it. But Taylor is going to bet again. Yeah, 450. The call by Isaac. I've been the call. So Taylor now knows he's got something. Here's the river card. River Six of clubs. 
Isaac's going to check. Taylor wisely checking behind him. Isaac Barron having some heart there. Now Isaac going to win the pot with two kings. Oh, there's Isaac's mom in the audience. Very excited for him. Isaac loves sports, has a special talent for three-pointers in basketball, he says, Mike. it would be interesting to see him and Jake get on the court and shoot it out, wouldn't it? Jake Baisley, of course, played Division II basketball, was a basketball coach, but Isaac says, I've got a knack for shooting threes. We can shoot a little bit if you like. Back to the game, Taylor, this time with an ace-nine of clubs. He's got over 8.4 million in chips. He's going to raise this to 200,000. Sorrell, the awful looking 9 6. Well, the last time Sorrell was on the button, he three bet with a four deuce. He won the pot with that. Here he's going to three bet with a 9 6 offsuit. He is a madman. Makes it 450 to go with a 9 6. I've got to love this. And Isaac goes out. Now it's on. Come on. Jake Baisley, and he goes all in with Ace Jack. An all-in four bet with Ace Jack. You just don't see it very often. That is knowing your opponents. Raise light and three bet light. Taylor has to go out, and Sorrell with an awful hand. He releases that as well. What action we are seeing, what aggressiveness. Beautifully done. And with that, we conclude our second hour of coverage from the Bay 101 Casino in San Jose, California. Be sure to join us next time when we will crown a champion in the thrilling conclusion of the Bay 101 Shooting Star. For Mike Sexton, Vince Van Patten, Tony Dunst, Matt Savage, the Royal Flash Girls and everyone at the World Poker Tour, I'm Lynn Gilmartin. See you next time on the WPT. I don't understand what this is for. <laughs> The World Poker Tour is sponsored by ClubWPT.com. Never lose a dime playing poker, guaranteed. There will be a champion at the Bay 101 Shooting Star tonight. Feel like a million bucks. Ooh, made for TV. Tonight in San Jose, California, Poker Destiny is written in the stars. Hi everyone and welcome to WPT's coverage of the Bay 101 Shooting Star. I'm Lynn Gilmartin. Now this has been an exciting final table and we are so close to crowning a champion as the remaining players take aim at the $1.2 million first place prize. Joining me to call the action are two stars in my book, Mike Sexton and Vince Van Patten. Well Lynn, what we're hoping for is an epic conclusion to this fantastic tournament. Four players left fighting it out for this title. The three chip leaders came in. They're still in first, second, and third chip position. Have been a reversal, though. Taylor Parr is now the chip leader. But, Vince, we have one shooting star left. Let's not forget him. <laughs> the Canadian Cyril Mitzi. He is very exciting. And I'll tell you something. These are four highly regarded players that have made a ton of money in the game of poker battling for this great championship. Thanks, gentlemen. Play is about to start back up, so let's check the chip counts and get down to the table. Well, there you see the Skrill chip count. Taylor Parr out in front, 7.8 million. Isaac Farron in second with 6.1. Jake Baisley with 3.9. Sorrell Mizzy with 3.2 million. And the winner's going to take home over 1.2 million. Second place, 700,000. And the Andes are going to start at 15,000. Blinds are 50 and 100. Let's go to the felt. Taylor Parr with a pair of fours. Yeah, Taylor, the chip leader. Has the two fours, gonna raise it, makes it 200,000 to go. The Canadian Sorel Mitzi goes out, and now Isaac Barron. Isaac's a local, he's 27 years old. What a tough player. And look, he's getting those plaques out. Wow, 550,000 he's betting. Those yellow plaques worth 100,000 each. Purple chips are 25,000, reds are 5,000. Jake Baisley goes away. And now Taylor will make this call. And he's got the small pair. He's looking to flop a four. We might bust this guy. A pair of fours versus king nine of clubs. Here we go. And the flop is an ace, ten, six of clubs. It's all clubs. Fantastic for Isaac Barron. Flopping the nuts. The stone cold nuts, as we say, and checks him. He does that because he knows this guy's very aggressive and might bet here. And Taylor doing just that. He is going to bet the two fours, 480,000. Do you raise or just call here? It's the okie dokie call, as you like to say, Vince. Oh, you never touch a raise there when you have the nuts. <laughs> Show tunes going off in his head. Let's go to the turn. And now the queen of clubs comes off, so this gives Taylor a flush as well. But 
Not like Isaacs, who's got the best hand possible. Isaacs gonna try to trap again. He checks. Taylor too wise for that. Checks. Last card coming up. Yeah, Jack of Diamonds comes off. I think Isaacs should lead out here. No, he's gonna check again. But even if the guy had a straight, he's gonna check here with four clubs on the board, Vince. Yeah, they both check. That's good. <laughs> He's going to win the main pot. He might have got paid off had he bet because Taylor did have a club. By making that nut flush, Isaac Barron has retaken the chip lead in this four-handed battle. He left some money on the table right there, though, for sure. But let's go right back down to it. It's on Sorrell from Canada. And Sorrell is 28 years old. He has King Nine of Diamonds. And he will raise. Makes it 200,000 to go. Isaac going out. Now over to Jake Baisley, who looks down at ace nine on the button. Won the last pot, and he will pop it to 330 total. Taylor out. And Jake will take that win, just like that. Take it when you can. What an aggressive bunch of players we have here. Talented. And he's going up to 20,000. Blinds are 6120 at this point. Action on Jake Paisley. Man, seemingly every pot is three bet or four bet before the flop by these guys. They're all very aggressive players. Jake going out. Now Taylor with the queen nine of clubs. He makes it 240. Sorrell out. And now Isaac with a jack 10. Well, he's going to make the call out of the big blind. This is Isaac's 12th WPT cash. First final table. Impressive here tonight. The flop is a 10-8-6, so he has hit tens. Isaac with top pair is checked. Uh, the two chip leaders at the table, the two youngest players at the table fighting it out here. Taylor with a two-way straight draw is going to bet 285000 A quick call by Isaac with top pair. Turn card, deuce. Now Isaac checks top pair. And with the two-way straight draw, Taylor fires 555,000 at him. And again, Isaac is making the call with the top pair. Down to the river we go. Is Taylor gonna hit? No. Ace comes off, and there's three diamonds out there. And again, Isaac checks. Taylor Parr's going for a three-barrel bluff here, Vince. Wow. 1,250,000. He bet on the semi-bluff on the flop and the turn, and now on the river, it's the stone bluff. What a nice call this would be by Isaac, but what a bet by Taylor. I mean, it's just tough to put 1.2 million in there on two tens in this spot when the guy has raised before the flop, bet the flop, bet the turn, bet the river. Boom, boom, boom. Your hand decreases every time he bets. And Isaac is going to lay this down. Taylor Parr is relentless in his aggression, and it pays off for him there. Well, those are two former online poker players of the year who went at it there. All four of these guys cut their teeth in online poker. They are tough. Starting out online definitely gave me a tremendous advantage in live poker because I got the fundamentals down, which I think is very important. When I'm playing my best, I'm like not really even thinking, you know, I'm just kind of reacting. It's like almost like just second nature. I've seen so many more hands than anyone who started playing live. And just being in these positions time after time is going to make you a better player. When you play a live tournament, you're playing one tournament a week. Online, you're playing 20 to 30 a day. That's why I'm not surprised by this group making the final table. Well, I'm not surprised either. They're all very talented players. They all got their start online. They switched over to live poker, and all of them doing very, very well. Winner's going to take home a whopping 1.2 million. Back down to the money pit we go. Action on Isaac Barron. 
and he will quickly fold his hand. Yeah, over to Jake Baisley on the button with Junkie Fold. So it's a battle of the blinds here. Taylor Parr in the small blind. Looks down at pocket kings. Now, when you pick up two kings at a WPT final table, you get $1,000 in your DraftKings accounts, courtesy of DraftKings. Taylor raises to 300000 But Sorrell with Jack-10 of spades quickly makes the call. And here's the flop queen, 10-5. So Sorrell picks up a piece of that. That could hurt him. And here comes a continuation bet with the two kings by Taylor. 255. Yeah, but Sorrell going nowhere after flopping a pair of tens. He's going to make the call, go into the turn. Let's see if anything crazy happens. No, just a deuce of hearts. Not going to be any let up and pressure with two diamonds out there, two hearts and a two card straight. Taylor putting in a strong 625. Nothing fancy. Just wants to bulldoze his hand, and he's done so. Good lay down there by Sorrell against an extremely aggressive player like Taylor. Tough to get away from second pair sometimes, but Sorrell did it wisely there. There's Taylor's parents. Well, you just don't know what the river card was going to be. So, moving on. There, Jake looks down at ace 10. Pretty good hand in a four-handed poker game. 240. And he's going to raise it, makes it 240,000 to go. Into Taylor, who has a nice little pair, pair of fives. Well, in case you're wondering how to play small pairs, if you watch Taylor Parr, it's just three bet with him. He's doing it. 600,000. Yes, and now Cyril Mitzi with an ace check. Mm -hmm. Says all in. Isaac out. A four bet all in with an ace jack offsuit. Second or third time we've seen that play at this final table tonight. This is knowing your opponents. Good lay down by Jake. May raise light and three bet light. So Sorrell just moving all in with the ace jack. But he's getting looked up here by Taylor with the two fives. So we have a race and Sorrell, Mizzy's tournament life is on the line here. It's a flip. Must win this pot to stay alive. Taylor definitely priced in to make that call, makes the call. And we are racing. Man, don't take that off. <laughs> it's in the pot. It's in the pot. Oh, I like that. <laughs> he puts his bounty badge out there. That's not showing a lot of confidence in winning this race. Sorrell, 28 years old. A big action player needs to get lucky here. Not going to happen on that flop as a queen three deuce appears. Sorrell needs to catch an ace or a jack to take the lead or two running diamonds, two running cars to make a straight. Can he do it on the turn? No, another queen comes out. So Sorrell Mitzi, the Canadian, down to his last card, needs a suck out. Otherwise, it's back over the border for him. Here it comes. He must catch an ace or a jack to stay alive. It's a five of spades. No luck for Sorrell. That's going to do it. For Canadian, Sorrell Mizzy out tonight in fourth place. I want that savage cat. 2,500. Well, Taylor Parr collecting the last bounty of the tournament as Sorrell goes out. 2,500 more in cash to his wallet. The Canadian out in fourth place tonight. He could just never really get it going tonight, Vince. Yeah, a great player. Hung around, but he couldn't quite make the swim at the Bay 101. Out in fourth place. He's over to talk to Matt Savage. <laughs> Savage with the needle interview afterwards. He's always needling people. Tough table out there today. What stood in your way? Uh, not winning a coin flip definitely stood in my way. Um, I mean, I got lucky earlier, and I've been lucky several times uh, throughout the tournament. Sometimes you lose flips, and yeah. 51 shooting stars, you were the last one. Do you take any pride in that? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the shooting stars this year were very talented, and to be the last one of all of them is obviously a tremendous accomplishment, so I'm happy with that. Well, that ensures that you'll be one again next year. Thanks, Matt. Right. <laughs> Appreciate it. There's more exciting action up ahead. Stay tuned. You won't want to miss it. Club WPT VIP members won over $100,000 worth of VIP packages during season 12. This season is set to be an even bigger year for Club WPT.com members. Win your way into an upcoming WPT main event only on Club WPT.com.
the World Poker Tour is really all about trying to bring more people into the game by getting them to feel comfortable, having a good time, and that's what poker's about. Everybody loves the tournament, so everybody comes into play, so we have the best in the world here. Where else do you go and you find a bunch of guys asking for autographs with pictures out here? I mean, it, I, I think it's better than the World Series. Here, it's more fun. People that play one tournament a year play the Bay 1-1 one -one Shooting Star. And I think the staff, the dealers, and everybody here that works at Bay 1-1 -1 makes it a place that they want to come back year after year. Well, Matt Savage is sure right about that. Players love playing here. They get treated great. Fans love them. Players just think this is the best tournament of the year for a lot of reasons. All right, down to three players. And the chip leader, Taylor Park, quickly folding his hand. Isaac Barron now with a 4-3, has made it 300,000 to go. These guys are playing with air, but right behind him, Jake with an ace three will make this call. Flop king 7-3 with two diamonds. Well, they both got threes. And Isaac gonna make a $300,000 bet. Jake with a big kicker and the threes. Still just bottom pair though. But all these guys know anybody raised before the flop is gonna continue. After the flop, whatever comes out there. Jake will make this call, go into the turn. And an ace comes out there. What a nice card there for Jake. He now has aces and threes, and here comes Isaac jumping right into the trap here, drawing dead. Jake's hand getting better and better. $500,000 bet and quickly called. Big trouble here for Isaac. Going down to the river. And his seven pairs the board. Now Isaac getting out chips again. Oh boy. Glutton for punishment. Snap call if that wasn't a seven. A huge bet, over a million. Jake has winced here because he had aces and threes. His hand just got worse. His opponent would time if he just had an ace in his hand because they both be playing ace and seven with the king kicker. Call. He got it. But he's made the call and he's going to win this pot. What a call. There's a quick break in the action, so let's check out the current Ublow WPT Player of the Year standings. After back-to-back -back victories, Anthony Zeno has secured the top spot, but two new players have moved up on the leaderboard. With his cash here at Bay 101 Casino, one to watch Garrett Greer is now sixth in total points. And with his performance here tonight, Jake Baisley has vaulted to third in the standings, knocking good pals Jared Jaffe and Zoe Karim down a spot on the leaderboard. It's definitely a little bit competitive between everyone in poker. I mean, it's just natural. But I got a group of friends that I travel with, mainly Aaron Massey, Jared Jaffe, Zo Kareem. And when you're talking to people who've been there before, that's where you get the best information. And it's just great to have multiple minds to bounce ideas off of. And everyone's pretty supportive in my cast. Well, that's what a lot of touring pros do. They travel in groups, they live, breathe, eat, sleep poker, discuss hands 24 hours a day. Where's my group? I want a group. <laughs> All right, back to the action here. Quick fold by Jake. And now Taylor with a queen eight. And he's on the button. He's going to raise it up. 300,000 to go. 700. Isaac, who has a junk hand, 9-3, but he says 700. He just blew off all his money in the last pot bluffing at it, and here he goes again. Back-to-back -back pots. Isaac taking a shot at this, but Taylor's not so quick to fold. 1.1. What poker we're watching here? These guys are not waiting on a hand to bet, folks. They are going with their gut feelings as to whether or not their opponent has a hand. Doesn't matter what they have. Isaac mucks the hand, completely discouraged. Outplayed there by Taylor. Ouch. Well, Taylor just sensed he might be making a move there because he lost the last <laughs> pot on the bluff, trying to get his money back. So what do you do? You just come over the top of him again. Taylor with 12.4 million. That is big bucks. <laughs> Can he close it? We're down the stretch here. Action on Taylor. Queen nine, off suit. Relentless reading through these guys. Like a pane of glass, and he'll make it 240 to go. Isaac gonna take a break. 
and catch his breath a minute here. Now Jake has picked up base 10 out of the big blind and just calls, doesn't re-raise. Yep, disguising the strength of his hand. Hoping to have things work out on the flop. Let's take a look. And it is a 10, 9, 5. So beautiful flop for Jake. And he checks. Well, that's a beautiful flop, not only because he's got top pair and top kicker, but because his opponent's got second pair. And he's a better, 260. And a quick snap call by Jake. Yeah, with top pair, top kicker. What a place to be in. Going to the turn, nothing card deuce. Jake checks again. And Taylor's putting him on some kind of drawing end, Vince. You just think the guy's going to raise you back, beat a flop top pair. Taylor's betting this for value, thinking the two nines are the best hand here. 480,000. Cool. And again, a snap call by Jake. Well, it's just a nicely played hand so far by Jake. Hopes nothing crazy happens. It doesn't. Seven of clubs. Well, yeah, that is a possible straight card. So if you've checked all the way with top pair, you might do it again here. And it goes check, check. And the two tens are going to take down this pot for Jake Baisley. And Taylor a little surprised that his opponent had top pair and top kicker. Jake playing that unorthodox, taking in the pot. He's got all his friends out here. Three players are battling beautifully down the stretch here at the Bay 101 on the World Poker Tour. Pure monster sound. You have to hear it to believe it. Get yours today at monsterproducts.com slash WPT. Enter code WPT25 to get your special discount. I'm joined by our Club WPT qualifier, Michael Williams, who won his way into this tournament by playing on Club WPT. So Michael, was playing this WPT event everything that you hoped it would be? It was great. I was treated like royalty. I got to meet some great players. You're a lot tougher than I am. You can be good. I couldn't ask for anything more. Oh, and I heard that you brought someone along who's very special to you. Yes, I brought my wife. Her name is Denise. She loves it. She loves the game. She loves to play. And she loved being here. It was wonderful. It was her dream come true. It was my dream come true. And what is your favorite thing about playing on Club WPT? Well, my favorite thing is that it's convenient. I can play when I want and I can win cash, prizes, and I'm here because of it. I won the tournament that placed me right here, right now. Awesome, thanks, Michael. Thank you. <laughs> oh man, it is great to see a husband and wife sharing a passion for poker with a monthly $100,000 prize pool. ClubWPT.com is the place to play for so many husbands, wives, friends, neighbors, and they're all enjoying unlimited risk-free poker, and you can too. Visit ClubWPT.com where there's always a game about to start, and you never lose a dime, guaranteed. Three players left. Taylor Parr out in front with 10.6 million. Jake Baisley in second with 5.9 million, and Isaac Barron in third right now with 4.6 million. Let's go watch him play. Action on Isaac Barron. He's got a beautiful hand, ace king. 240. And he will raise, goes to 240. That's the minimum raise. Jake behind him with a king nine. 625. Wow, he's going to get fancy here. Makes it 625. Taylor out. One point three five. There you go. Gonna make it expensive, Jake. And now you can't be liking that hand too much anymore. No. Jake gives it up, so Isaac Barron taking down that pot. Yep, there's his family. Isaac is a local, a top player, 27 years old. What a shot he has tonight to become a millionaire. Okay, a quick fold by Jake. Mike, the Andes are going up to 25,000, blind 75 and 150. Taylor called, and Isaac's going to raise to 450 with nothing. All in. And all in, quickly makes Isaac's bluff go away. Well, Taylor limped in with the deuces. Isaac raised it thinking he didn't have much. And then he moved all in. Taylor did with the two deuces to take down the pot. These guys are super aggressive. Anything can happen. They play really fast. Top-notch poker going on here. Isaac right now, first to act. He lets look at his cards. Jack three of spades. Can't play that junk. Vince, they play fast in more ways than one. 
They're not only fast acting on their hands, they're fast when it comes to putting chips in the pot. Jake with a pretty solid ace nine. Now he's just gonna disguise it, just calls. And Taylor with an attractive king tennis space, also not gonna play it fast. Flops a seven six three. It's shocking almost to me that Taylor did not raise before the flop with this hand when his opponent left in, but it's just like he knew. But he is going to bet here on the flop after his opponent checked. But Jake quickly makes the call with the ace high. Turn card is an eight. That's the eight of spade. Gives Jake an open in straight draw, but it gives Taylor a gut shot straight draw and a flush draw. But one thing we've learned about Taylor is he doesn't check drawing hands on the turn. He bets them. 450. Most guys happy to check and get a free card off in this spot. Jake on. Oh, wow. He is going to push all in. He's doing it with ace high and a draw. How much? Uh, just over three. With well, about three million more. You see Taylor sort of chastising himself there a little bit, slapping his hands. Aggravated to bet where he's going to get possibly shut out of this pot. He could have taken a free one off. Did they air the, what the river's gonna be on TV? Well, he wants to rabbit hunt. Can I, can I bribe him to show me? <laughs> that means he's not gonna call this, otherwise he'd see that card. He has laid it down. What a play by Jake Baisley there. And of course we can rabbit hunt. Let's take a look at that whole card and see whether he would have been lucky. Oh my goodness, a seven of spades wow. on the river. He'd have knocked him out. We'd have been playing heads up, Mike. Good drop, horrible outcome. Tonight's episode is sponsored by Ublow, the official watch of the World Poker Tour. All in. Well, Nam is going to call him, and Nam Lee is going to be our Ace champion seven, here, Vince. Yeah. Aces and sevens are going to win this pot. He has done it. Now there you see the former champions of this event. The three remaining players would love to add their name to that winner's list. Taylor Parr, our chip leader. Action's on Taylor. And getting out those raising chips, it appears. Yes, he'll make it 400,000 to go. Isaac out. And now Jake with a 4-3 of diamonds. He's going to defend out of the big blind with the suited connectors. And the flop is a king, queen, seven, but there's two diamonds that gives Jake a four flush. He checks it. Taylor, of course, going to make a continuation bet, as he does every single time. Doesn't matter what comes out there, whether it hits him or not. And here he's betting 225,000. Not a big bet into a pot that's got 950,000 in it. And Jake quickly calls. Let's see if he can hit a diamond. No, with the deuce of spades. Again, Jake checks. Taylor too smart for that. He checks as well. Let's see if a diamond happens now. No, seven pairs the board. Well, the only possible way Jake could win this pot is to bet at it. 550. He's doing it right here. 550,000. With four high. Going out on a limb. And Taylor has nothing. He has jack high. But look at this, Vince. He's getting out raising chips here. He's not going to call the jack high. He's going to raise with it. Well, this would be another bold play by him if he should finish it. Yes, he is going to raise. Well, he's just representing. He's got three sevens there. And he takes down that pot. But how about both of these guys bluffing on the river, Vince? WPT champion Jared Jaffe tells Paul Volpe to keep it down to a golf clap. But someone who is not so quiet is Tony Dunst, ready to give us his thoughts on tonight's play in the Raw Deal. In the early years of televised poker, it seemed like bluffing was always talked about as a battle of egos. It's about applying pressure to your opponents, bullying them out of pots, and becoming the table captain. But in reality, 
Bluffing is more technical than psychological, and making good bluffs means understanding hand ranges and board textures. Let's break it down. It's obvious that Taylor Parr plays an aggressive game, but it's a form of controlled aggression, and he's not blindly trying to win every pot. And when Taylor makes a bluff, he picks situations where he has equity and can plausibly have the hands he's representing. First, there was Taylor's triple barrel against Isaac Barron. Taylor flopped a straight draw against Isaac's top pair and fired both the flop and turn. The river brought an ace, which completed the backdoor flush draw, and Taylor fired a third barrel. At that point, there's several hands he'd bet for value, like two pair, sets, straights, and flushes. There's not much Isaac can do but fold, because most of the time he calls in that spot, he'll be paying off a better hand. Then Taylor made another river bluff, this time against Jake Baisley. Taylor bet the flop with air, then checked behind on a brick turn. The river brought another seven, which is the least likely pair for Jake to call the flop with. As it turns out, Jake has a busted draw himself, but when Jake bet the river, 550. Taylor made a raise designed to represent a seven. That's an additional benefit to making these types of plays. Sometimes you're not even bluffing, you're just preventing yourself from getting bluffed. So the bluffs that Taylor makes are based on the hand range he puts other players on and the way the board runs out, not some arbitrary desire to bully his opponents. But all that aggression has made him the de facto table captain. So he'll just need to lose the hoodie and add a hat. Well, Taylor Parr, definitely the table captain. So far tonight at this final table, there you can see he's well out in front, 14.3 million. Isaac Barron, 3.7, Jake Baisley, 3.1. And the blinds are going up to one and two hundred. Let's take a look at Taylor's cards. Holy mackerel, pair of kings. And that means another thousand dollars in the DraftKings account. He's gonna raise the four hundred thousand to go. All in. Well, Isaac has got an ace high here, moving all in. Jake with ace nine. Got like four. A little less. I just don't think you can call when a guy's raised and the other guy's moved in. He goes out, and of course, the insta call there by Taylor with the real hand, the pair of kings. You know, Taylor's just been raising and three betting consistently at this final table with no hands. Now he's finally picked up two kings. Isaac in trouble here. He had an ace, too, huh? Sorry, man. It's all right. I mean, it's pretty obvious. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, had ace, I had ace nine. Taylor, pretty big favorite right now. Isaac squirming in his seat. Can Isaac get lucky? Not there. Eight, seven, four. Does give him a few more outs, though. Yeah, he flops a good shot straight throw. Any five will give him a straight. Ace will give him the lead. Taylor's still out in front. There's Isaac's mom praying. For a five. Praying to the poker gods here. She knows her son needs help. Let's see if he can get it. He needs the long shot to come in. Let's take a peek. It's oh, an ace. ace. He got it. It does come off, Fitz. <laughs> Even though Jake folded an ace, he found one on the turn to take the lead. It's not over. Isaac's not jumping for joy yet. He knows his opponent could catch a king to beat him. There's Taylor's parents. Down to the river we go. And now Isaac, the big favorite. Unless something stupid happens, but it doesn't. Three of hearts on the river. Isaac going to take this one. Well, how ironic is poker, Vince? Taylor's been in raising and re-raising all night with nothing. Now he picks up two kings and doubles up his opponent with him. We've still got three players left fighting for this title. This episode of the World Poker Tour is sponsored in part by DraftKings. If you like poker and sports, then you're going to love daily fantasy sports at DraftKings. Go to DraftKings.com, enter promo code WPT, and start playing today. Welcome back to the World Poker Tour. We're at the Bay 101. Three players remain. Taylor Parr is the chip leader with 9.5 million. Isaac Barron right on his heels, though, with 9.3. Jake Baisley with just 2.3. Got to get moving. Let's go to the felt. Jake Baisley on the short stack. Picks up ace five of clubs. On. And he is going to push all in. Taylor out. And Isaac Barron. Call. With a pair of queens. What a time to get him. Isaac Quickly Isaac. calls, of course. Queen of ace five versus queens. Ace of clubs, Not going to tell you I had an ace. Thank you. 
With all the bad luck Jake Baisley's had so far in these showdown battles, maybe he'll get some good luck here. He's due. Can we bring that other dealer in, the bad beat dealer? Let's see what happens. But, oh, there's an ace right like that, ace nine three. Just a great flop for Jake. Jake out flopping Isaac. Jake saying, finally I get a break. But it's not over. Still got to dodge a queen. This would be the ultimate pain for him now if a queen comes up. Here comes the turn. Will it be a queen? No, it's a deuce of diamonds. Safe for Jake. And Isaac looking completely discouraged to pick up queens in a three-handed poker game and be way behind. Queen? River card. Can it be the miracle queen? No, it is not. Deuce of clubs appears. It should be 23.50. So Jake Baisley is going to double up to stay alive. We still have three players left. Such a stupid game. <laughs> it's a great game, kid. You got seven, you got five something? Yeah, I got seven. I don't know if I have five. And Benson, back to back hands, we saw Taylor Parr with two kings lose to an ace six. Now we see Isaac <laughs> Barron's two queens lose to an ace five. Isaac quickly throws away his hand. Jake just doubling up. Got a decent king seven of clubs. <laughs> and he's got some chips now. And he just limps in and calls out of the small blind with king seven of clubs. Yeah, that's never going to fly against this guy, especially when he's got a real hand. Taylor with a very attractive ace ten of spades. So he's going to raise it. 525 total. Call him. Call. Jake has pushed and an insta call with ace 10. Well, Jake Baisley just fought to get a hold of those chips. He could get them all back right here. Crowd completely silenced. Here come the first three. It is an ace, deuce, deuce. Beautiful flop for Taylor. This king is burning. Jake is going to have to hit two running sevens or two running kings to win this pot. Nothing else will do for him. It could come deuce, deuce. They would split the pot. Jake in a whole heap of trouble as we go to 4th Street. It's a nine of clubs. Well, that's going to wrap it. Doesn't matter what the river card is. Well, Vince, that's going to do it for the former basketball player, Jake Baisley. Fouls out in third place. So take home 461,000. He's over to talk to Matt Savage. Jake, a super tough final table. How intense was that three-handed battle? It seemed like it would never end. The worst hand just kept winning. Uh, it's just really tough when you're up against two good opponents, and you just got to try your hardest. What's your take on this heads-up battle? Isaac and Taylor are two of the best players around. I think it could last a while. They're pretty deep, and they're very knowledgeable. So could also end quick, though. They're pretty aggressive, so who knows? All right, thanks again, Jeff. Thanks. See who walks away with over a seven-figure payday at the Bay 101 Shooting Star. We're coming right back. Casino between Isaac Barron and Taylor Parr. Royal Flush Girls Jeannie and Kat have brought out the money these two are playing for, plus a pair of monster 24K headphones and an exquisite Ublo watch to be awarded to tonight's champion. Before play gets started, check out the conversation I had with both players. Isaac, how sweet is it to be heads up for WPT title in your own backyard? Yeah, it's amazing. I mean, I could never have dreamed of it. I've been wanting to do well in this tournament forever and to have my friends and family here supporting me, it's unbelievable. Now, how are you going to overcome Taylor's chip lead? I mean, he's playing really well. Um, I'm going to have to get some luck, but I mean, I like my chances. All right, well, good luck. All right, thank you. Taylor, yourself and Isaac seem to have been going at it throughout this entire final table. Is it any surprise that the two of you are now heads up? For me, no, not really. Uh, coming in, especially with uh, the way the chips were, there were lots of good players, but I thought coming in, he was taking myself out of the equation, the best player, so um, I'm not surprised at all. Now, as the heads up battle begins, there you see the chip counts of the players. Taylor Parr out in front, 13.4 million. Isaac Barron with 7.7 .7 million. The winner's going to be taking home over 1.2 million. Here we go. 
Action on Taylor. He's got ace five. Blinds are one and two hundred. Yeah, he's certainly going to raise with this hand. Makes it four hundred thousand to go. Isaac going to splash around with a ten six. Well, defending out of the big blind cost him a half a bet. And the flop. Ace ten three. They both have some of that. Taylor, of course, out in front with aces. Isaac checks. Taylor makes the continuation bet as he does every time. Doesn't matter what comes up. Isaac's going to stick around and pay him off. Go into the turn. Deuce doesn't help Isaac. And he checks again. Taylor with aces there. He's going to slap out. Wow, 800. And Isaac, not believing him, going to pay him off at this point. Isaac in a bit of trouble here. River card, five of spades. Now there is a four card possible straight on the board. Isaac checks again. But Taylor's got aces and fives now. And Taylor pillaging ahead, bets 1,250,000, very hefty. And Isaac. Yeah, he knows now all he can beat's a bluff. You've seen Taylor do it a lot tonight. Oh, but Isaac's going to lay this down. Yeah, turns out to be a good laydown. But Taylor Parr increases his chip lead after making aces up there. Right back on it. 9 10 of hearts. It's time for Taylor. And he is getting the raisin chips out. Makes it 400,000 to go. Right behind him. Isaac with ace nine. 1,050,000. Well, one million and fifty thousand is the bet now. And Taylor, who can afford to make this call and look at a flop, does so. So over two million in the pot. Ace nine versus nine ten. Oh, and the flop is a nine seven deuce. Four flush for Taylor and nines. Isaac obviously with the top pair with the bigger kicker. Isaac going to make a bet over a million. And Taylor. Oh, he just calls here. Going to the turn. Three of diamonds comes off. So Isaac out in front, still with top pair, big kicker. Isaac. 1.65. We'll bet 1 million 650. And a snap call by Taylor. He doesn't raise even yet. I'd have got it all in there if it had been me, but Taylor Parr just calling here. Going down to the river. Taylor's behind. Taylor has to hit a heart or a 10. It is a five of hearts. Taylor Parr's made a flush. Now you just got to hope that Isaac bets. Seems like he has to to me. You're just not going to put your opponent on a flush draw. All in. He's gone all in. You can't blame him. He has to. Call. There's the call. Taylor Parr is going to win. You're never getting away from top pair, top kicker. Tough luck for Isaac Barron. Good game, man. Isaac is going to be out in second place. Taylor Parr is our champion. What a dramatic finish. He's the champion. First, Matt Savage talking to our runner-up. Your deepest run in a WPT, $704,000. Are you disappointed or satisfied? Uh, a little bit disappointed, but at the same time, I'm pretty happy with the, the results. So, uh, yeah, I'm happy with it. All right, well, obviously a great run here. Let's talk to the Bay 101 Shooting Star Champion from El Dorado Hills, California, Taylor Parr. Yeah. Woo! Taylor, you drove it down the middle. You did make a bogey. Vince and I thought you played terrific poker. I played everybody at this final table. Congratulations. Tell us how you're feeling right now. Um, like a million bucks. Uh, I feel good. Like, it's the greatest poker accomplishment of my life. Uh, beating a bunch of good players makes it that much sweeter. Well, you played sensational, no doubt about that. In addition to over $1.2 in cash, you're entering the WPT World Championship at the end of the season. We've also got a pair of customized monster headphones for you that Kat's going to present to you. <laughs> nice. You get a beautiful Ublow watch that Jeannie will now give you. And one more time, let's hear it for the Bay 101 Shooting Star Champion, Taylor Parr. Lynn, back to you.
What an incredible moment for Taylor Parr, the season 13 Bay 101 shooting star champion. From Mike Sexton, Vince Van Patten, Tony Dunst, Matt Savage, the Royal Flush Girls and everyone at the World Poker Tour, I'm Lynn Gilmartin. See you next time on the WPT. You blessed me off aces in this tournament one year, you know? I did. I didn't know that. I don't understand what this is for here. <laughs> the World Poker Tour is sponsored by ClubWPT.com. Never lose a dime playing poker. Guaranteed. Welcome to Seminole Hard Rock Hotel and Casino and the World Poker Tour. Feeling like a million bucks. I'd better cash. Oh, Mike Saxon will be so disappointed if I don't cash. Tonight, poker heads back down to the Sunshine State for the Seminole Hard Rock Poker Showdown. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the World Poker Tour. I'm Lynn Gilmartin. Hollywood, Florida continues to build its reputation as one of poker's top destinations. And this week, players flocked from far and wide to show their game has no limits and to grab the top prize here at the Seminole Hard Rock Hotel and Casino. Allow me to welcome you to Hollywood, Florida in the Seminole Hard Rock Poker Showdown. We want to wish all of you the very best of luck in your quest to make it to the final table. Okay, let's get this party underway. Dealers, let's shuffle up and deal. Players were excited to get into action on the first of three starting days, including two-time WPT champion Darren Elias. You know, a lot of people gamble, and I think no one can get back in. And uh, a lot of loose, fast play, big pots. So it's a lot of fun playing day one. Yeah. And season 13 wants to watch Christy Arnett, who made the trip down south to play in this massive event. I flew in a couple days early for this event and satellited right in, so pretty excited about it. Whether it was the sunshine, the beautiful accommodations, or just the ability to re-enter if eliminated, the field was in good spirits. He heckles me, He's, he heckles me because I just finished reading his book and I'm not listening. If I can write a book, I can't read a book. How am I gonna write a book? Showing the crowd why he's the boss, drinks were on Hometown Poker Pro and Season 12 Ones to Watch, Danny Seward. The Miami boss. Oh, yeah. Toast to Dano. Fellow Season 12 Ones to Watch, Aaron Massey had a rough day, but got plenty of encouragement from some fellow pros. Got in bad twice today. You're a great drinker. I'm a great drinker, according to Willie. There's always been one. Yeah, there's always tomorrow, though. Also making an appearance was last season's Seminole Hard Rock Poker Showdown champion, Eric Afriat. It's been exciting. I've been waiting for it for the last uh, month or so, getting the little bugs in the stomach. But uh, I think I'm ready to defend. At the top of the counts was Florida-based poker pro Barry Hutter, who ended the day with over 300,000 in chips. It's been a pretty easy day. Oh, oh. On every pot I played. Day 1B got underway with some new faces gracing the field, plus some familiar ones, including two season 13 Best Bet Bounty Scramble finalists, Corey Hockman and Jared Reinstein, who are looking to make another big splash. Oh, I'm feeling good, very good. I'm ready. I'm gonna run deep and make some uh, extra money. With a massive field, there were plenty of recreational players in the mix, who proved tough work for some of the pros in the room. You guys are winning every hand yeah, against the team maestro. I just don't know what's going on. Player after player hit the rail, with some already thinking about their next bullet. I'll see you tomorrow. Definitely see you tomorrow. I might even be early tomorrow. I think it's a good night's sleep. No drinking tonight. Really. Good luck for all of you. Nice. Hope I don't see you tomorrow. One player off to a huge start was WPT champion Jared Jaffe. His accumulation of chips took a detour when he went to a nearby urgent care on dinner break. But the dedicated poker pro soon returned and was back in action. The last two days, like my sinuses have been bothering me from the plane, and uh, I was just like, I couldn't even see straight, which is probably why I got all these chips. Uh, so I ran and got a quick antibiotic, and should be good to go now. Jared Jaffe survived in many ways, finishing with 191,000 in chips, good for seventh on the leaderboard. At the top of the chip counts was Canadian poker pro Ryan Rivers with over 226,000. Buying back, bullet number four. Plenty of previously eliminated players took another shot on the final starting day, but the field did include some new hopefuls. I'm gonna play today, Benny, I don't know about you, but. 
Yeah. You know, you got the Miami Vice look here, man. You even have him shaved. You're looking sure. good here. You're I, styling. Uh, you, you fit here in Miami. I get to wear this once a year, Mike. That's it, okay? <laughs> Local pro and season 13 ones to watch Vlad Mizoretsky also felt today was his day to take a shot. And I know that if I would have busted on Thursday or Friday, I forced myself to play more again. And I was like, you know what? One or two boats is more than enough. Vince Van Patten finally decided to join the field and was promptly all in for his tournament life. All right, here we go. Boom! 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 Top pair. Queen. Got no action. Vince was able to chip up throughout the rest of the day and finished with a decent stack of nearly 105,000. Got a little lucky and happy to come back tomorrow. At the end of the day, 570 entrants had registered for the final starting day, with 222 players surviving to join the combined field on day two. California poker player Alex Greenblatt finished at the top of the leaderboard with over 267,000 in chips. Yeah, some people kind of gave them to me. Uh, ran well, played well. Try to do the same thing tomorrow. I feel pretty good. Got my little peppy drink with me. Be shifting to beers in a couple hours if I'm still around. Wish me luck. Everyone would need a little luck to make it to the end of the day, with 554 surviving players of the three day one starting days finally under one roof. He's drawing dead today against me. This dinosaur right here is a friend of mine, so I'll take it easy on him. Thank you very much. And we're ready to uh, have some fun today. As play got underway, the official numbers were released. With a $5 million prize pool, 150 players would make the money. With first place taking home $1 million, plus a spot on the coveted WPT Champions Cup. Making the cash at the WPT would mean a lot to me. It really would. Uh, with Mike and Tony doing so well. I mean, I haven't played too many tournaments, but I, I think I'm overdue. And we got to gamble, got to get lucky. Hopefully it's now. With the plan for the field to hit the money today, there was no shortage of players hitting the rail. While others built up monster stacks and the pressure built with fortunes on the horizon. I better cash. Oh, Mike Saxon will be so disappointed if I don't cash. Down to 151 players and on the money bubble, past WPT finalist and Florida native Daryl Fish moved all in with pocket tens. He was called by Bruce Snell holding ace king. After a safe flop, Daryl had to dodge an ace or a king to survive, but a king fell on the turn to give Bruce the lead. No help on the river sent Daryl home just short of the money. Good luck, sir. 13 years of the World Poker Tour. First cash! Yes! Nice going, nice. guys. With the bubble burst, play opened up and the field began to shrink as players hit the rail, including season nine ones to watch Jason Mercier, season 12 WPT world champion Kevin Starman, plus two-time WPT champion Darren Elias, who ended his run in 116th place, cashing for a record-breaking eighth time in season 13. Darren was still in second in the Ublo WPT Player of the Year race to Anthony Zeno, but still had a chance to catch him with a deep run at the WPT World Championship. Another two-time WPT champion, Mo Sincharanya, was heading in the right direction after scoring a double knockout when his full house bested the hands of Lazaro Hernandez and Steven Wolanski. Mo Sin would end the day with 860,000 in chips, good for 14th on the leaderboard. Texas native Brian Green finished second in chips and at the top of the counts was Raj Bora. I did work hard, but I made a couple of crucial hands. Also surviving with a decent stack was Vince Van Patten, who was focused on making a deep run. Day three, I'm ready. I made the money, so Mike Sexton, look for your new partner, my friend. Today, like, I feel about 90%, so... That's, uh, you know, like a normal person at about 50%. <laughs> day three was moving day at the Seminole Hard Rock Poker Showdown, with 92 players remaining, playing down until just 18 were left. Three-time WPT finalist Dan Highmiller had a philosophical approach to the day ahead. Every day starts a new tournament, pretty much. I'm going around. So you got a long way to go. As the field began to thin out, several players emerged with big stacks, including local Ellie Levy, Poker Pro Joe Ebanks and 22-year-old Griffin Paul. Just keep fighting, trying to get the right reads and 
play well. Vince Van Patten was having a good day, despite taking a little ribbing from table mate Stephen McCoy. Oh, the cameras aren't him a lot, so it's not a big deal. He, he's not that good, tell you the truth. He's not a good player. <laughs> That'll never get used. <laughs> he's not that good, but that won't he, get used. He's been crushing me, though. That's the truth. He's there been, you go. He's been beating me in every pot. There you go. Some players who saw the end of their tournament run on day three included WPT champions Kevin Eister, Noah Schwartz, and Jared Jaffe. Got short, we just had no choice but just to get it in and then win. <laughs> Ellie Levy scored a double knockout when he hit two pair on the river. Two pairs. Against Scott Efron and Bruce Snell. Ellie's stack soared to nearly five million. On an ace-high board, Vince Van Patten shoved all in for nearly 800,000, only to be called by Sean Shah. Vince would need to hit a king to stay alive. But the nine of hearts on the river ended Vince's deep run in 27th place. I enjoyed the roller coaster ride. I had a lot of thrills in the last three days. It was a lot of fun. I made some money. I played really well. Really happy with the way things turned out. After an up and down day, day two chip leader Raj Vora was eliminated in 22nd place at the hands of two-time WPT champion Mosin Taranya. WPT champ Ravi Raghavan was the next player out the door at the hands of surging Sean Shah. When the field reached 18 players, play concluded for the night. Dan Highmiller found himself at the bottom of the chip counts with just 500,000. But on the other end of the spectrum, the top of the counts saw a close battle between Griffin Paul in second with over 6 million and Ellie Levy in the chip lead with close to 6.3 million. I think that I'm playing very, very solid. Yeah, I'm very happy with the, my moves today. The coast is starting to clear as we close in on our final six. Which player will make their way to the final table? Find out when we return to the Seminole Hard Rock Poker Showdown. Tonight's episode is sponsored by Ublow, the official watch of the World Poker Tour. This episode of the World Poker Tour is sponsored in part by DraftKings. If you like poker and sports, then you're gonna love daily fantasy sports at DraftKings. Go to DraftKings.com, enter promo code WPT, and start playing today. Welcome back to the Seminole Hard Rock Poker Showdown, where 18 players are still vying for one of the six seats at the WPT final table. On a beautiful, sunny South Florida morning, the remaining players gathered in the Seminole Hard Rock Ballroom ready for battle. Day 1B chip leader Ryan Rivers' confidence was high. I can't believe I'm going to win a million. That's pretty sick. Chip leader Ellie Levy continued to dominate early in the day, knocking out season 13 LAPC 7th place finisher Vladimir Dobrolovsky in 18th place. Then, two two-time WPT champions saw their days come to an early end. Cornell Simpan in 17th place and Mosin Charania falling in 15th place. There's still one more tournament left this season, so we'll be okay. Florida player Andre Crooks began climbing up the chip counts by knocking out two players in a row to send his stack to 6.4 million. Boy, those last cards. And although he came into the day as the short stack, Dan Heimiller proved tough to eliminate and chipped up to over 8 million when he knocked out Harvey Van Deven in 12. In a monster pot between the two start of day chip leaders, Griffin Paul moved all in on a 10 high board and was snap called by Ellie Levy. When the cards were tabled, Griffin was a huge favourite and only had to dodge a 10 to knock Ellie out. A seven on the river gave Griffin the 10 million chip pot and sent Ellie home in 11th place. I'm happy, listen, I'm 75 to sit here in this action for three days. Think about it, four days, five days. That's best one. Down to just 10 players, the field was combined to one table. Mike Sexton stopped by to check out the action. A lot of guys in my generation that were playing this tournament, a lot of them got deep, but I'm looking at these final 10. I don't see too many old guys left. What happened? Youth continued to prevail as Griffin Paul knocked out David Peters in 10th, cracking David's pocket aces with ace-king offsuit 
after making trips on the turn. Ooh. Ow. Then Dan Heimiller's amazing comeback came to an end when he found himself at the losing end of a race against the surging Andre Crooks. Too bad I had bad luck on the end, but I had a lot of luck to get that far. With one more elimination before the WPT final table was set, Sean Shah moved his short stack all in and was called by Griffin Paul. Sean's ace 10 dominated Griffin's king 10, but a king on the flop gave Griffin the lead, which he held on to, sending Sean home in seventh place. Griffin Paul would bag the chip lead heading into the final table, featuring five other tough players all looking to win their first WPT title. Before play gets started, it's now time to turn to WPT's Mike Sexton and Vince Van Patten for more insight on this final table. Now, Vince, first off, congratulations on cashing in this tournament. Now, you played with some of these guys. How tough was this field? Well, Lynn, these guys were tougher than a steak at my in-laws' barbecues, believe you me. Amazing, impeccable poker they played. You know, I didn't catch many cards, really. I was playing selective manipulation poker, just like my man Mike Sexton taught me. I was doing fine, and then in the end, I became Billy Bluff on my bluffed off of my chips. I should have been there. Oh, well, we were all rooting for you. Well done. And Mike, the stakes are very high tonight with $1 million going to our champion. How do you think this will influence players' decisions? Well, Len, players are always a little nervous when they make a WPT final table. Their friends and family are watching. They want to look good on TV. And it's hard not to think about winning a million dollars. But after a couple of rounds, you know, they settle in, they focus on the game, and they just play poker. Tonight, I think you have to make the chip leaders. Griffin Paul, the youngest player at the table, at 22, and Andre Crooks, the favorites. But as Vince said, all these guys are tough. This should be a good one. All right, thanks, guys. And before the players took their seats, we grabbed a quick word with chip leader Griffin Paul. I'm a little nervous, uh, to be honest, but once uh, things get going, I know uh, I was playing my game and adjust to the table. Everyone's a solid player, so I'm going to have to get through a real tough field. It's a big, uh, big scene out here, but I'm just going to do what I do best and uh, hope, it, hope it goes my way. We'll have to wait and see who will add their name to the WPT Champions Cup when coverage of the Seminole Hard Rock Poker Showdown continues. Pure monster sound. You have to hear it to believe it. Get yours today at monsterproducts.com slash WPT. Enter code WPT25 to get your special discount. Please welcome the Royal Plus Girls, Tuba and Jeannie. You can't get the adrenaline rush in a cash game like you can in a tournament. Griffin Paul. You're playing for a million dollars and anything can happen. To be the champion would be unbelievable. It'd be the best moment in my life. Joe Ebanks. I played so many tournaments and been in this final table situation that I sort of know what to expect from the other players. So I'll use that to my advantage whatever way I can. Ryan Rivers. Making this WPT final table is my biggest accomplishment so far. It's kind of like validating the last 10 years of grinding it out. It's going to be sick if, uh, if I win that million. Walking under the leg of WPT, I feel like it's a little bit. Sean Wen. This is my first uh, WPT main event. I was like, hey, you know, take a shot, you know. If other players could do it, why can't I? Brian Green. I've got a little bit of divine intervention going on. Uh, I think I've just felt like things are coming to me really good the last few days. There's just a time that things are going to happen, and today feels like my time. Andre Brooks. The WPT title is very prestigious. I believe this is the, the top of the pinnacle, and this is where everybody wants to be. I don't play for anything else. At this stage of the game, the money doesn't even matter. I just want to win the title. We started with 1,476 players. We are down to these six. Griffin Paul out in front with over 14 million in chips. And that's what they're playing for, the winner taking home $1 million. And also a great tan. It is beautiful down here in Hollywood, <laughs> Florida. There's the Ublo watch. The champion will take home what a timepiece. All right, the Annie's are 15,000, blinds are 50 and 100. Here we go. Sean Wynn, quick fold by him. Brian Green from Texas also folding, as does the local Andre Crooks. And now Griffin Paul, the chip leader. He's going to raise with a nothing hand, Jack Four. Moves it up to 200,000 to go. Joe Ebanks out. 
pair of threes by Ryan Rivers. Ryan Rivers from Niagara Falls, Canada. Been a pro for six years. Makes the call with two threes. Flop comes ace, queen, queen. No help to either player. Action on Ryan, he checks. Into the chip leader, will he make the continuation bet? Yes, he does. 200,000, Mike. Ryan gonna make the call here. Going to the turn. The jack comes off. Now this gives Griffin the best hand here with queens and jacks. But he's gonna check them. Yeah, they both check. Going to the river and just another jack. Jack's full for the man that was slopping around. Griffin Paul. Yeah, Ryan's gonna check again. Griffin seems like a bit of a beast when you watch him and you're not seeing what hands he's showing down. He's the one you want to worry about. It's hard to tell if he's got it or not, you know. And that's that's tough to play against. Especially he's got all the chips. Well, he's gonna bet his full house here. 525,000 into Ryan. And unfortunately for Ryan, he's now playing the board. He's just gonna give it up so the rich get richer. Griffin Paul, the 22-year-old pro out of Calabasas, takes down that pot. There's his family and friends. They flew out from California last night to be here today. Pretty exciting stuff for a 22-year-old. All right, on to the next hand. Andy's are up to 20,000. Blinds are 60 and 120. Action on Andre Crooks. He's got ace-10, and he will call. Now, back to Griffin, our chip leader, who's got the suited connectors, 980 clubs. You always beware of the limper, as they say, so he's just going to call here, not going to three-bet. Next up, Joe Ebanks, 29 years old, from Ohio, won't play that. Ryan. Will, though, with A6. Gonna make a button call with the ace high. <coughs> Sean Wynn, they call him Q. He's gonna make the call with a small blind. The big blind said, let's go. And Vince, just like that, we've got five-way action. Wow. <laughs> now that's a poker game. Five guys out of six that's in the That's exciting. Pot. Here we go with the flop. It's a 10-5 deuce. Tens for Andre Crooks with a big kicker. And a four fuss for Griffin Paul. Well, Q's gonna check. Brian checks. Top pair, big kicker, makes a bet, 310. And the question is, will the chip leader raise in this spot or not? Remember, these are the two chip leaders here in this pot. Now he just calls Ryan out, Sean out. Brian goes away, so two-handed now. The plot thickens, going to the turn. And it's a king of spades, no club. King of spades, okay. Yeah, Andre thinks his tens are good. Indeed, they are. Makes a healthier bet this time, 575,000. And Griffin Paul has had enough. Doesn't want to go for that flush. Folds the hand, Andre Crooks is going to take this one down. Andre owns a used car lot, West Palm Beach. Been in car sales for 10 years, an online poker player for 12. He says the money is secondary to winning the title. I heard that before. <laughs> Don't quite buy it. No. All right, Griffin Paul now with a quick raise. He has ace five. He's moved it to 240, but Joe E. Banks right behind him with a pair of kings. And when you get pocket kings at the final table on the World Poker Tour, DraftKings puts $1,000 into your DraftKings account. And he has raised it up to 625, full by Ryan. Sean gets out of his way. Brian Green looks to an ace three, won't play that. Andre also folded. So back on our chip leader, Griffin Paul. 1.5. Oh boy. He's going to re raise it. He is going to 1.5. Doesn't believe the guy on his left. He could get punished here. Well, Joe's in third chip position right now, but I'm guessing more chips are going in the pot here. Well, you're thinking to yourself, is it possible this guy has a pair of aces? If so, he's just got to pay him off. All in. And he's going to go all in. Yeah, it's going all in. You just can't give your opponent a flop in this situation, especially if he's the chip leader. Yeah, and he is going to stun Griffin Paul, who invested heavily. So Joe Ebanks taking home that pot. 
We are just getting started here at the Seminole Hard Rock Poker Showdown. Stay with us. We're coming back for more on the World Poker Tour. This season, the Royal Caribbean International Royal Flush Bonus awards players who hit a Royal Flush a cruise trip for two. I flopped. To join WPT on our next cruise, go to WPTCruise.com. Poker is a game of both skill and luck. And after winning a seat online, some WPT qualifier Ernest Evans showed that he had both this week here in Florida. I was surprised to survive day one. Actually, I started with thirty thousand and I ended the day at twelve thousand five hundred. There's my huge stack. In the bag it goes. Day two was uh, different from day one. I uh, finished with one hundred and eighty-three thousand chips. I bagged chips twice. <laughs> Cashing in a WPT event was very exciting for me. Not only was I able to win some money, but I was able to meet some great poker players. You took a free roll and turned it into some money. That's awesome. Absolutely. Good job. Thank you. The great thing about Club WPT is what actually happened to me, which is I was able to play and succeed online, and that led me to success in a live situation. I wouldn't have been able to play in a tournament of a buy-in of this size without that opportunity. I'm going to try again at Club WPT. Every time you guys run a satellite, I'll be playing in it. That is right, Ernest went home $12,000 richer, and you know what, that could be you. Just visit clubwpt.com and learn how you can win a chance to compete for real cash at a live WPT event. Well done, Ernest. Action starting back up. Let's get back down to the table. <laughs> okay, and there's the Skrill chip count. The chip leader at this point, Griffin Paul, Andre Crooks in second, Joe Ebanks in third. Back to the table. On Joe Ebanks from Ohio, former dishwasher. And he's got a 9 8. <coughs> and he will raise with it to 250 to go. Ryan out. And Sean Wynn with a little pair of deuces. You like to see a flop because it's a pretty easy hand to play. You either hit a set or you just abandon ship. Sean calls. Yeah, makes that call. Brian Green from Brian Texas calls. out. Andre Crooks not going to call. And Griffin Paul Griffin taking a breather goes out as well. So we got 9 8 versus a pair of deuces. Let's see the first three. Well, Ace King three. No help to either player. Action on Joe. No C bet by Joe here. Yeah, he checks, and so does Sean. Going to the turn. Queen of Clubs helps no one. And Joe checking again, so. More or less just waving the flag here. And now Sean gonna get the chips out saying, like old Amarillo Slim used to say, you checking, I'm a betting. I stole that line from you. 275,000 he bets. Joe has not mucked his hand here, Vince. He's not calling. So he's either check raising or abandoning ship. And he's going for the check raise. He's getting out chips. Look at this play by Joe. Tell me it ain't so. Well, it is so, and I don't know how Q is going to go any farther with his hand. Wow, Joe Ebanks, the former dishwasher, putting him on the spin cycle. Oh, boy. That's like hitting him in the head with a dirty plate right there. <laughs> oh, beautifully done, Joe. Joe got into poker because he read an article about a guy that won 60000 playing online poker. He's a very competitive guy. He said, I want to try that, and he's done phenomenally ever since. Now, these are guys that you think a million dollars is going to mean an awful lot to. One was a former dishwasher. One was a dealer for two years. One worked at Chuck E. Cheese. Two other guys are in the car business. You love it when these kind of guys get to a final table where the money is life-changing. <laughs> All right, we've got a bunch of folds. And now Andre Crooks will raise with a legitimate hand, ace-10. Griffin out. But Joe Ebanks with a queen seven of diamonds. Yeah, he's feeling good because he stole that last pot, so we're going to play this one. These are the guys in second and third chip position. Here's the flop. Ace jack three with two diamonds. Crooks hitting top pair. But four flush there for Joe Ebanks. Could see some fireworks here. Joe checks. Audrey bets 380. But no Joe's going to play. The question is. Do you check raise here? Nope, he's just going to call with the flush draw. Yeah, just hoping to catch. Victimized crooks going to the turn. Can Joe hit the diamond? Not there, king of spades. He 
You just wonder how much it comes into play when you have a flush draw there that the guy you're playing against has more chips than you. Well, Joe checks Andre quickly betting again. 7.05, it looks like. And now Joe Ebanks, the dishwashing man. He's getting out raising chips. He checked raised on the turn the last hand and won it. He's going to try it again here. Yep, he's going to push it. Total of 1.7. But Andre, a quick call by Andre. Yeah. Not going to go anywhere with that. Well, most of the time when a guy check raises in this hand, one pair of aces won't be good. Joe would love to hit. Can he get there? No. King on the river pairs the board. King of club on the river. Now what do you do if you're Joe? You didn't connect. You raised on the turn. Is it white flag time? You win. That's check, check. Andre Crooks is going to win this pot with aces up. Yep, and a lot of guts. Yeah, there's his girlfriend, Deborah Cruz. She's been his girlfriend for 13 years. They have four kids. So when he says the money is secondary to winning the title, when you have four kids, I'm not so sure about that. Well, look at this. He has just turned into the chip leader with over 13 million. Andre Crooks. He said this is going to validate his whole poker career by making this final table. Possibly winning the title now. He's the chip leader. Back to the action we go. Ryan Green, second time at a WPT final table. Quickly folds. Andre going out. Well, Griffin Paul out as well. Now Joe Ebanks with the button. 240. Well, not deterred from losing that last pot. Going to make a button raise here. Yep, with a nothing hand. Makes it 240 to go. Ryan goes away. Only one to beat now is Sean Wynn. Sean's got ace deuce. Well, Sean's seen this guy check raise on the turn the last two pots he's played. He couldn't beat aces up a minute ago, so Sean, well aware this guy can raise anything. He's going to three bet it here. 640,000. Yep, he's going to apply pressure to Joe. Back on Joe with just a miserable 9-10. What do you do? Oh. Wow. All in. What a play by Joe Ebanks. To Maniac. And Vince, I don't see how Sean can possibly call this with ace deuce off suit. Sometimes you just get outplayed in poker. Well, Sean's on the short stack, and Joe is just putting all the pressure on poor Sean, and he's got to muck that hand. Beautifully played by Joe Ebanks. We are seeing some poker here. Joe Ebanks. Bossing it up. Staying at the Seminole Hard Rock. It's beautiful. Rooms are pretty sweet. Nice pool. Tournament's great. Cash room's amazing. We don't get that kind of action back home. I like Florida, love the weather. The pool's uh, really nice and relaxing. And I'm really pleasantly surprised by Council Oaks, the steakhouse. I've ate there twice, top notch there. Seminole Hard Rock's a great hotel and casino. Staying here is awesome. Everything around it's fun. There's bars and uh, restaurants. The tournament was incredible. I would definitely come back. Well, all players will come back to this place, Vince, because it's one of the great <laughs> casino properties in the world. And certainly you and I know about that steakhouse because we go there about every night. Yeah, it's fantastic. Six players battling for a million dollars here tonight. Let's go to the felt. Quick fold by Griffin. And now Joe Ebanks with a king three of diamonds is going to raise to 250. Ryan out. And Sean with a nothing hand will fold into Brian Green, who looks down at a pair of eights. Not bad. Well, what do you do with a mid-pair? Well, he's going to make a call out of the small blind. And now behind him, Andre with a pair of dines. He's going to raise to 775. Joe goes out. Back on Brian from Texas. Well, Brian trying to figure out now if Andre was squeezing and was just making a raise because he didn't raise. If he's really got a big hand, but he's going to call. So it's eights versus nines. It's two blinds going at it. And the flop is a king, seven, deuce doesn't change a thing. Action on Brian. He's going to check. Now Andre is not much of a checker. He's going to bet here. 850,000. Andre's game to me is... Um, one of the scariest at the table. He definitely worries me a little bit. and try to steer, steer clear of him unless I have the goods. 
Yeah, it's just not the kind of hand you want to get too involved in. He makes a very good laydown. Saves a lot of money there. Sure does. Andre Crook's going to take home that pot. And there's Andre's family and friends here to root him on. One of the two locals at this table. He and Q that you're looking at right there, both from West Palm Beach, got a house full of friends rooting them on tonight. On to this hand, couple folds, and now Andre going to get aggressive with King-10, 255 to go. Griffin out. And now Joe Ebanks with an attractive ace nine of clubs. He's going to call out of the small blind. Ryan looks down at junk folds. So again, two of the three top chip leaders fighting it out here. Flops an ace, five, four aces for Joe Ebanks. Yep, he's got top pair, mid kicker, he's going to check. Yeah, they both check. Going to the turn six of clubs. Six of club on a turn. Yeah, Joe is going to check again. And Andre with no hand and no draw. He's going to make a wager here, try to pick up this pot, 475,000. However, Joe does have the aces, played it slow. And just a, yeah, okie dokie call. Go into the river. And it's a seven, a four straight out there. Joe checks. Again, Joe checks. Scary card. Well, Andre knows the only way you can win this pot, most likely, is to bet at it. You're right, try to bluff. His name is Crooks, by the way. Wow, 1.45 million. So a healthy wager on the river. Tough decision now for Joe Ebanks. But Vince, if you're sitting in Joe's seat, you're saying, what would this guy bet with unless he had a straight specifically? So in Joe's mind, he's either got a straight or he's got nothing. He makes the call. Oh, beautiful. And he done. makes it exactly correct. Joe Ebanks, that is why he's not washing dishes anymore. <laughs> Brilliantly done. Excellent read. But you can't fall crooks on that play either, Vance. He tried to win it by betting. Six players going after this title. We're coming back for more action here on the World Poker Tour. Stay with us. ClubWPT.com VIP members get more than just a chance to win cash and prizes. The Club Savers Guide program saves VIP members big money at places they already shop and visit. Play big, save big, win big at ClubWPT.com. We're back with more poker action from the Sunshine State. Griffin Paul from Calabasas, California, the chip leader with 13-5. Well, Vince, we've got three halves and three have-nots, basically. This final table, three guys have a lot of chips, three short stacks. Going to be interesting to see the dynamics and how this plays out. To the felt we go, Brian Green, very crafty player from Texas, quickly folds his hand. Andre Crooks also going out. Yeah, over to Griffin Paul. He's got two fives. Yep, he's raised it to 240. Makes it Joe out. And now on to Ryan Rivers. No, up. he will not play. Ryan up yeah, over to Sean Wynn, known as Q. I wonder if he's a pool player, Vince. That's why they call him Q. I don't know. That makes sense. Came from Vietnam at age eight, and now he's a professional poker player, a local, and he's got seven five of clubs. He will make this call. Yeah, going to defend out of the big blind with this. Suited hand. So pair of fives versus seven five of the flop is an ace queen six. So Q has flopped a flush draw and checks. Griffin, who raised pre-flop, is going to make a C bet, a continuation bet here. 275 into Q, who's got the four flush. Does he have the nerve? Well, he goes all in. All in. And it's going to win him the pot. So nice check raise all in bet by Sean Wynn to take down that pot. Yep, he's a local, plays in all the cash games. Quite a following here. Q nicely done. My friend think I'm beastly and fearless. I'm not being there to be friendly with anybody. I'm not scared to put my uh, chips in. If I think I'm ahead, I don't mind putting it in on a bluff. If I feel like I'm in the spot that where people are trying to outplay me and I will call them down or fight back with them, I'll play them. I'm just going to play my game and hopefully I pick up some hand and double up, triple up and 
win this tournament and get a title. A lot of great poker players with the last name win. And we got one here tonight, Sean Wynn. Well, he's just a cash game player. This is his first ever WPT event. Here he is at the final table fighting it out for the title. And check raising all in with seven high there. And the blinds are going up to 75, 150, Mike, with a $25,000 ante. Action on Griffin Paul. Got king, queen of diamonds, and he will raise the 300,000 to go. Joe Ebanks out. And now Ryan Rivers, former poker dealer. He's got a queen, 10 of spades. Really he's looking over at the button and the two blinds to oh. see if they look interested Ooh. in playing. And then he moves all in with the queen, 10 of spades. Oh, Canada. Well, he's on the short stack at this table and makes a move right here. Well, he's still got some chips to do it. Everybody folding. Only one to compete with is Griffin Paul, who has chips, has a pretty good king, queen of diamonds. Do you want to put another 2.2 million in the pot here with King High? He does not. He lays it down, so a nice all-in bet there by Ryan Rivers. Ryan, 32-year-old from Niagara Falls, Canada, been a poker pro for six years, was a dealer for two years before that. Okay, on to the next hand. Quick fold by Griffin. Joe Ebanks now with a jack 10. He's got guts. He'll make a raise, 300,000 to go. Ryan out. Mr. Q with an ace three. Oh. Wow, he is going to push all in. Wow, what aggressiveness. Brian out, Andre's out. Man, he knows Joe Ebanks is just an aggressive player. Could be raising with any two cards. It's a close one. He says it's close with a Jack-10 offsuit. Most players would just jettison that hand immediately instead of thinking about putting another 1.7 million in there. The former dishwasher. Well, he is gambling here. He certainly is. Wow. What a call by Joe. Interesting play. He has given Q a big chance to double up in a big way. Q win must win this pot to stay alive. Otherwise, he'll be our sixth place finisher. He is the local rep at this final table. Will he stay alive? Here we go with the flop. It is a nice one for Q as he hits a pair of threes. Come seven, three deuce. Joe looking for a jack or a 10 to take the lead or two runners to make it straight. <laughs> Another three. That's going to do it. Q shoots his arms up. He has Joe drawing dead with one to go. Q is going to double up here, Vince. And the crowd roars. What excitement here at the Seminole Hard Rock Casino, and they are rocking and rolling in the house tonight for their man Q. All right. We show us double up. We end our first hour of coverage from Florida. Make sure you join us next time for more poker action from the Seminole Hard Rock Poker Showdown. For Mike Sexton, Vince Van Patten, Tony Dunst, the Royal Flush Girls, and everyone at the World Poker Tour, I'm Lynn Gilmartin. See you next time on the WPT. I don't understand what this is for. <laughs> <laughs> the World Poker Tour is sponsored by ClubWPT.com. Never lose a dime playing poker, guaranteed. Welcome to Seminole Hard Rock Hotel and Casino and the World Poker Tour. Feel like a million bucks. Q has Joe drawing dead with one to go and the crowd roars. <laughs> Waves of cash are hitting the shore in Hollywood, Florida. Hi everyone, welcome to the Seminole Hard Rock Hotel and Casino. I'm Lynn Gilmartin. At this point, play has been sharper than a stingray by the beach, and it's only going to get more fierce as we inch closer to crowning the lone survivor in this poker showdown. For more on tonight's play, let's turn it over to our very own Mike Sexton and Vince Van Patten. Guys, what are your thoughts on this final table? 
Well, Lynn, we're seeing some action-packed, exciting poker here tonight at the Hard Rock, but no surprise in chip counts. The three guys that came to the final table in first, second, and third chip position are still in first, second, and third chip position. Griffin Paul is leading, Andre Crooks in second place, and Joe Ebanks in third place. Yeah, but Mike, how about this guy, Sean Wynn? They call him Q. He's never played in any big buy tournaments yet. He hasn't made a whole lot of cash. He just plays local. He has a ton of friends, <laughs> and we have six players left tonight. And we're near the Everglades. Nobody's in the swamp quite yet, but it could happen soon. The hunt for the Seminole Hard Rock Poker Showdown title is set to continue, so let's check the chip counts and get down to the action. Well, there we see the Skrill chip count. Griffin Paul out in front. 13.5 million. Andre Crooks in second place. There you see what they're playing for. The winner tonight taking home $1 million. Yeah, big money at stake here tonight. <laughs> Along with that, they get the beautiful new blow watch. What a timepiece that is. Blinds are 75, 150, anties are 25. Let's go to the felt. Joe E. Banks, quick fold. Ryan Rivers now with a pair of fives. He's going to shove all in. Well, he's got the short stack. Only got a little over 11 big blinds, and he ships it. Sean not going to play ace nine. Brian Green out. Over to Andre Crooks with a pair of fours. He won't play. Yeah, Griffin out as well. So Ryan Rivers taking down that pot. He's a 32-year-old poker pro at Niagara Falls, Canada. Been a pro for six years, was a former poker dealer two years before that. There you see his friends in the house rooting him on tonight. Okay, on to the next one. Sean Wynn, they call him Q Folds. Brian Green from Texas out into Andre Crooks with a 6-7 of spades. Got to raise to 350. Griffin out. But Joe Ebanks with an ace-5 will make the call, and Ryan with a King Jack also gonna speculate. Well, getting a good price to call here, so he makes it three-way action. And flop comes ace, queen, deuce. Joe out in front with two aces. Ryan with the gut shot straight draw. They both check. And Andre with no hand and no draw. The guy doing the betting, 525,000. Continuation, Joe makes the call with the aces, Ryan out. Turn card a three of spades. And they both check. River card, 10 of clubs. It tells me Andre Crooks just giving up this pot, waving the flag by checking on the turn. Yeah, they both check. And smartly done. He'd have been called down, no doubt about it. Joe Ebanks, the 29-year-old pro from Kent, Ohio, taking down that pot. Mike, as you know, the WPT is constantly on the move. So let's take a moment here to give a shout out to our latest winners on the World Poker Tour. Now, since we last saw our viewers at the Bay 101 Shooting Star, we added two more names to the WPT Champions Cup. And one of those was our sixth place finisher at Bay 101, Ravi Sundar, who made his second WPT final table just days later at WPT Rolling Thunder to earn his own spot on the WPT Champions Cup and more than a quarter million dollars at the Thunder Valley Casino Resort. And the glory didn't stop there though, Mike, as we crowned another WPT champion and this time it was in Austria at the Montesino Poker Club where Konstantinos Nanos earned his spot in WPT history after taking down the title and 150,000 euros for his victory at WPT Vienna. We also held three WPT national events. First WPT Montenegro at the Splendid Hotel and Spa, and then we traveled to Italy in the Casino de Venezia for WPT National Venice. Then it was down to South Africa and the Emperor's Palace Hotel Casino where Wesley Wiegand earned the W and nearly $75,000 for his victory at WPT National Johannesburg. We also held two WPT Deep Stacks events, one in Mississippi at the IP Biloxi Hotel and Casino, and another right here in Florida at the Best Bet in Jacksonville, where George Wolf took down the title and pocketed almost $85,000 for his win. Congratulations to all of our WPT winners, and for those of you sweating the action at home, stop dreaming about it and get out here and play. Just log on to WPT.com for a complete schedule of upcoming events. But for now, let's get back to the action here at the Seminole Hard Rock. Well, six players left, fighting it out for the million-dollar first-place prize. Action's going to be on Brian Green from Decatur, Texas. He's going to raise it up here with an ace-10 offsuit. Makes it 300,000 to go. Insta-call by Andre Crooks behind him with ace-5. Fold it around to Sean Wynn. He makes the call out of the big blind with the queen-5 of diamonds, so three-way action. 
and the flop is a jack nine four. <coughs> Sean checks. Brian checking. Andre giving it up. He checks as well. Going to the turn. It's a jack of diamonds. Well, this gives Q a flush draw. He's got the worst hand of the three, but he's the one doing the betting. 500,000. And they're folding. So a nice bet by Q on the turn there to take down that pot. He's a local from West Palm Beach. Just a cash game player, though. This is first ever WPT event. Here he is at the final table. Yeah, he's happy go lucky. Came from Vietnam at age eight. He is shining here tonight. Let's go back to this hand. Joe Ebanks looks down at a queen, six of hearts. And he is aggressive. He will raise the 350 to go. The Canadian behind him won't play. And now Q with an eight, six of clubs also folding into Brian Green, who is going to go all in with an ace nine of hearts. Brian, one of the two short stacks at this table, moves all in with the ace nine and Andre out. Griffin, the chip leader, not playing. So back on Joe Ebanks, the former dishwasher. I'm sure Joe can make the call here with the queen six. I might have to make, take another shot at you. Not at you, but just in general. Yeah, we've seen him call in this spot when a guy moved all in for 1.7 million when he had Jack 10 offsuit. Maybe he'll have learned his lesson. And he opts to lay it down. Yep, wises up. So Brian Green from Decatur, Texas. He owns an auto financing company, has for 15 years. Second time at the WPT final table. He is talented. The way the risk factor between my business and poker correlate, it's almost identical. I saved $50,000 up. I had the perfect plan to start this car business. I went to my banker, tried to get him to, to match. He basically laughed me out of the building. I had to risk everything I had, and if I didn't make it, I was gonna fall flat on my face. But I risked it, and you know, it worked out for me. And poker's the same idea. If you don't take that risk, you can't win a million dollars. Well, Vince Bryan believes he can do anything he puts his mind to. Three years ago, this guy weighed over 300 pounds. He said, I'm going to get in shape. Obviously, he's done that. I see him in the gym every day working out hard. Good guy. What an opportunity here tonight. But let's go back down to it. Action on Ryan Rivers from Canada. And Ryan this time with a king eight of clubs. He is on the short stack, and he's going to shove all in. Yeah, he's only got 10 big blinds, so you might as well move it in here. Sean and Brian out, Andre out. Griffin, our chip leader, won't play. Oh. Only one to beat is Joe Ebanks. He's got ace eight. Gonna cost him another 1.3 million to call. Yeah, I call. And he's gonna make the good call. Well, as his opponent dominated, he just thought Ryan could be a bit of a desperado being on a short stack. That was the case, the ace high, the best hand. <laughs> Pretty bad, man. That's bad shape to be in. Yeah, yeah. It sucks. Well, the Canadian, the family man, poker professional now in a lot of trouble. <laughs> His wife is expecting twins. He would love to stick around and make more money here, but he's in dire straits at this point. I'm feeling this one. Let's see if he gets lucky. Here's the flop. It's a 10 8 3. No good for the Canadian. Man, it's flop two A's, but that doesn't help him. He's gonna have to catch a king or two running clubs to win this pot. It's some hurts. <laughs> Sorry, man, I shouldn't. Gotta have a sweat, I guess. The dishwasher. Club. Putting the Canadian on spin cycle. Can he dry him off? And the five of diamonds on the turn. All right, if the man from Niagara Falls, Ryan Rivers, doesn't get some help here, Vance, he's going over the falls in a barrel, out in sixth place. That is right. Niagara Falls, slowly I turn, step by step, inch by inch. Can I survive? That deuce comes off. That's going to do it for the lone Canadian at the table. Ryan Rivers, out tonight in sixth place. Ryan Rivers going to take home 217000 Back to the falls he goes. We're down to five. Let's go see what Ryan has to say. It was pretty good. It was fun. I was pretty much crippled first couple rounds, bled out, and then 
you know, didn't really catch any cards. Um, and unfortunately, dominated there with the ace-8, so yeah, what can you do? It just wasn't in the cards for Ryan Rivers, who is out in sixth place. We'll be right back with more from the Seminole Hard Rock Poker Showdown on the WPT. Pure monster sound, you have to hear it to believe it. Get yours today at monsterproducts.com slash WPT. Enter code WPT25 to get your special discount. Casino. We're having fun. We have five players going after a million dollars here tonight. That's the first place prize. Back down to the felt we go. Action on Brian Green. Quick fold by him. Andre Crooks out. Our chip leader Griffin also folding. And now Joe Ebanks looks down at an 8 5. And he is going to get aggressive with it. Yep, we're going to raise out of the small blind with the 8 5 of clubs. 375,000. Sean Wynn with a jack six. And he's going to make the call out of the big blind. He's got position. Jack six versus eight five. The flop is a nine five three. So a good flop there for Joe. He takes the lead with two fives and checks. Puzzled by that check. Q checks right behind him. And now hits a jack on the turn to take the lead. Action on Joe. Again, he checks. And Q, local cash game player, going to make a bet. Bet the 400. Now, because he didn't bet on the flop, he's got a problem as to what to do on the turn, whether the guy's bluff or not. He doesn't know. He calls with the two fives. And yeah, now he is behind, going to the river card. It is a seven. Action on Joe. He checks. And again, Q is going to bet, this time 650000 Q I play with a lot. I think he's a tight, aggressive player. But I also saw him make some big calls, and every time he was right. I don't think Q is uh, afraid. He likes to call people when he thinks they're bluffing. Well, Joe has made the call here. He's going to kick himself when this hand's over. He knows if he'd have bet the flop, he'd have probably won this pot. And then he paid off a bet on the turn and the river to compound his problems. But the crowd goes crazy as Q takes down the pot. Oh, man. This is fun. This is exciting. Q, the local, has a swamp people going crazy here. Oh, Vince, every time he wins a pot, they go Q, 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 Q. Remember when the Frenchman was at the final table and they were going whoop with the axe? One of the most fun nights we've had. This could top that. Who knows before oh, it's over? Oh, boy. Cocktail. <coughs> All right, moving on to Andre. Quick fold by him. Griffin Paul is going to fold. Now it's over to Joe Ebanks. And he is going to get aggressive with just a 10-7. Makes it 300,000 to go. Sean goes out. Brian Green has picked up a pair of 10s. He's going to push it all in. Yeah, 2.4 million all in and a quick fold by Joe Ebanks. Yeah, Brian Green is going to win the pot. Yay. <laughs> clap, clap, clap. Poker is a very social game, as you do know. And with a VIP membership at clubwpt.com, you can play and chat against a variety of competitors. And if you win a seat to a live tournament, yeah, you, you might get to put a face to that screen name. Can I pop one of these off and put my name up here? Nice hat. Yeah, I like yours too. I'd like to have two of them. My wife could use one. You want to play for it? <laughs> sure, let's play for that. Oh, it's Ooh. a race. That's a lovely that. race too. Look at that. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> Look at that. Come on, what a suck out. All right, hey. watch. There you go, there's that. What do you like about Club WPT? I like to watch some of the videos on Club WPT because as a new player, first time in a live tournament, they actually help me learn some things about the professional players. For me, it's, you know, it just allows me to play poker at any time that I have available. And of course, you want a package like this. I know, it's been amazing, hasn't it? Unbelievable time. Oh, Unbelievable. just incredible. 
Oh, hi. Oh, did you win something else? Uh, I did. I, I, I won a hat just for you. Hand it over, babe. We can have matching hats. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now I don't mind losing so much. It looks so much better on her oh, face. Absolutely. <laughs> Learn how you can compete for a share of $100,000 in cash and prizes every month. Play on clubwpt.com and never lose a dime playing poker. Guaranteed. Griffin Paul from Calabasas, California, the chip leader. He's only 22. Yeah, five players left fighting it out for a million dollars. First place prize. Vince, it could have been you at this final table. Great performance by you. You finished at the third table in this tournament. You had a shot to be there. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. It was fun. It didn't happen. But I made some money. I'll be back. Hey, a couple folds, and now Sean Wynn. And he's on the button with two sevens. He's going to raise it to 350000 Brian out. Andre now with a king-queen. He's proven to be a tough player, man, so far. This final table, and he's going to three bet here with the king queen. Makes it 750,000 to go. Now, what do you do with two sevens? Well, you just call if you're Sean. You're going to see a flop. A flop comes ace nine eight. No help to anybody. Action on Andre. He three bet before the flop. So he's going to make a C bet here. 875,000. And Vince, just tough to go any farther with two sevens with three overcards out there. And the guy that three bet you before the flop has bet the flop. Yeah, he's going to put the pressure on Sean. Sean with just a pair of sevens. He cannot play. So nicely done by Andre Crooks, the local. Did he just call there? Chance already lost that pot instead of won it. Look at this, Vince. According to the Wonder Cam, a seven came off on the turn. Yeah. Would have given Q three sevens. Crazy things happen on the WPT. We're coming right back. Stay with us. This episode of the World Poker Tour is sponsored in part by DraftKings. If you like poker and sports, then you're going to love daily fantasy sports at DraftKings. Go to DraftKings.com, enter promo code WPT, and start playing today. I'm just a sports fanatic in all sports. Every day I'm in some type of uh, contest on DraftKings. I love sports and I uh, love the NBA and entered into a $7 satellite. Got a $55 ticket out of that and then from that 55 I got this seat. I have been to satellite through DraftKings, a $50 satellite. Well, the biggest difference I think with DraftKings is that you get to change your lineups up until the times the game starts, which is the one big difference from other daily fantasy sites. It's just easy. They, their uh, mobile app is easy, their system's easy, Everything about them deposits easy. I mean, it's just a really good site. I've been in fantasy sports for the last 12 years. So I'm doing year-long leagues, but now I'm switching to a daily. Me and my buddies, we switch all together to daily. We found DraftKings to be one of the better sites out there. You know, you get to get, get a poker seat out of it. Tournament poker, it's very similar to DraftKings. The payouts and everything like that. You're thinking in daily fantasy sports. You're trying to be contrarian a little bit as well. You're trying to throw people off with poker, too. I'm just your everyday guy that every now and then goes to a poker room and plays a little bit and uh, just fortunate enough to actually make it down here. We are back here on the World Poker Tour at the Seminole Hard Rock Casino. Tonight, one of these players is going to take home the first place prize of $1 million. At this point, Griffin Paul is the chip leader. He's from Calabasas, California. Let's go back down to the felt. Brian Green from Texas. He's got the king five of clubs, lays it down. Andre going to raise it up here with a king jack. Makes it 350000 to go. And now, around to Griffin Paul, the chip leader. He's got a pair of sixes. He's getting out raisin chips here. Yep, he is going to make it 875 into Joe Ebanks, who has a king jack. And he's got the same hand that Andre Crooks has. He is getting out another raise for betting this pot with a king jack off suit here. What a play by Joe Ebanks. Sean out. As is Andre, and now it's back on Griffin with the pair of sixes. Yeah, I just don't know that you can stand this kind of heat with two sixes here. Now, Griffin Paul is a country line dancer, and you just wonder if he's going to do a little boot and scoot and boogie here. And indeed he is. He's going right out of this pot. Scoots right out. Joe Ebanks takes it right down with a beautiful four-bed hand. 
Vince, we have seen some sterling plays by this guy. Yeah, he's made a mistake or two, but I'll tell you, he's made a lot of really, really good plays at this final table. And now the blinds are going up to one and 200 with a $25,000 ante. Now Joe looks down and finds ace queen of diamonds. Much better than the hand he just four bet with. Makes it 425 to go, a couple folds behind him. Well, Andre's gonna make the call here with the ace eight offsuit. And Griffin ejects two-way action. Ace eight versus ace queen, and we are a flopping. A flop is queen four deuce with two spades. Beautiful for Joe E. Banks. Andre checks. Top pair there for E. Banks. Well, continuation bet, but this time Joe has top pair, top kicker. 600,000. But Andre thinks his ace high might be good here. Oh, don't get crazy on us here, Andre. He is. He's going to call it, Mike. And now the six of spade comes off. Now that should set off caution lights, I would think, to both players, since neither have a spade in their hand. Andre's going to check it, and Joe. Well, he's reaching for betting chips here, Vince, but very dangerous when the guy calls you on the flop. And out comes the straight card and the flush card. Yeah, he's going to put the pressure on. 1.2 into Andre. There's one guy that I can have here in the top three, and that's Mr. Ebanks. He's a very experienced player. I play, played with him uh, back in my online days. I know he's a very good player. Plan is to attack him and get him out of here. Attack him? All right. Whoa. Well, he is attacking, and I mean big time. He's drawing completely dead. And yet he's raising here to 2.6 million. It could be the wrong time. This guy has top pair, ace kicker. But fence, if the guy has a straight or a flush, you're drawing completely dead. That you is always true. hate to put your money in, drawing completely dead. Plus, you have to face another possible bet on the river. What are you going to do then with one pair? And it's going to work. Andre Crooks making a great play. Beautifully stealing that pot. He lives up to the Crooks name. Well done. He is now the chip leader once again. We're coming back with more action here on the World Poker Tour. Stay with us. What if there was a place where over $1 million in cash, prizes, and WPT entries were given away every year? Well, there is, and it's only a click away. Join ClubWPT.com today and win a share of over $1 million every year. This game is a very thin line between genius and donkey. To get to this point, everything in poker I've learned through pretty much trial and error. I try to play different every time. If I catch a cue a few hands early and they're like, oh, that guy's tight, I'm loose as a cannon after that. If I'm loose at first, I try to tighten up, but I try to play the total opposite of my image. I put hours and hours and hours in. Tournaments, sit and goes and cash games, just hands in different situations to get to where I'm at now. I love the game, I just love the game. This is why I'm here. Well, Andre Crook's been very impressive at this final table tonight, Vince. And he is the current chip leader, as you can see, with over 13 million in chips. Yeah, all that work has paid off for Andre Crooks. Looking good here tonight. Let's go back down to the table. Action on Sean Wynn. Yeah, he owns a used car lot. Andre Crooks does. Says with the money wins here tonight, he's going to build up his business. Well, there he goes. Andre, this time with the ace four diamonds, going to make it 400,000 to go. Griffin out, and now Joe E. Banks in the big blind with just a jack, three of spades. But he'll make this call, splash around. Yeah, got outplayed a minute ago by Andre. Gonna tangle with him again. Oh, queen, jack, six, so Joe E. Banks out flops Andre, catches jacks. Joe checks, Andre's gonna bet though. 475. Joe with the two jacks, gonna make the call. Going to the turn. Board pairs sixes. Joe still out in front with jacks up. He checks. And Andre checks. Andre just hoping his opponent's got a straight draw where he'll now have the best hand. Four on the river. That gives Andre a Check. pair Check. of fours. Jack. They both check. Well, the two jacks are going to win this pot. Joe Ebanks taking down that pot. Joe likes to play video games. Got in this tournament on a $385 satellite. He is getting some good value in this event here at the Hard Rock. Started playing poker a few years back after seeing an article that someone won online, 60000 and he hasn't looked back since. 
onto this hand a couple folds. Well, every time Griffin Paul puts his sweater up on his mouth, he plays the pot, doing it here, raising with the king four spade to 400,000. Joe's out, but Sean has called this with a nine five of diamonds. So two way action, here we go. Queen nine eights, the flop. Yep. Q, as they say, has two nines. He checks. And Griffin gonna make a continuation bet with nothing. 425. Griffin bets 425K. What do you do with second pair here? You call if you're Q. Fourth Street is a three of spades. And that gives a four flush there to Griffin Paul. Q thinks it's no apparent help. He checks. Now Griffin can bet this a little bit with more ease. Yeah, close to a million, 975. Oh, wow. Nice call again by Sean. Yeah, he's got to try to run him down. Yep, he's out front with the nines. Let's see if they hold up. Griffin would love to hit his spade and punish, but no, it's a queen. Pairs the board. Griffin has nothing. Well, again, Sean checks. He's got to be feeling good about this, hoping that his man doesn't make a bet. Well, Griffin fire a third shell. That's the question. Oh, oh wow. Wow, he is going all in. He is putting maximum pressure on Q. Can Q make this call? It would be brilliant if he did. But he knows if he calls and loses the pot, he's going to be out in fifth place. Well, this would be the call of the year if Sean could make it. But no, he has to release the hand. Oh, just too much pressure, Vince. Oh, the great players win pots without having the best hand. You just saw Griffin Paul do it there. All right, action on Griffin Paul. Let's take a look at his cards through the DraftKings hole cam. Oh, he's got a jack and another jack, two jacks. He'll make it 400,000 to go. Griffin makes it 400K. Rewarded for the great bluff, and now you pick up a legit hand. Joe E. Banks goes out. Sean has to be punchy from that fold. And now Brian Green with an ace 10 oh, really? on a short stack, and he's going to push all in. Oh. Yeah, he doesn't even have 10 big blinds, Vance, so he moves all in with the ace 10 like anybody would. Griffin Paul, the 22 year old, in a great place to knock out the Texan. Oh, boy. The country line dancer, Griffin Paul, clicking his heels right now, just hoping the jacks hold up. Come on, baby. Good luck, man. Brian Green, second time at a WPT final table. Experienced poker player in a heap of trouble right now. Queen 7 4. No help for Brian Green. It's not over. Wisely put by the 22 year old with two cards to come. Brian can't look. Go into the turn. It's a four, pairs the board. Well, we are down to the river. Brian Green must catch an ace on the river or he'll be heading back to Texas. Last card coming up. Will it be the last card for Brian? Has to hit the ace. It's not going to happen. Five of diamonds. Back in the saddle for Brian Green. So Brian Green from Decatur, Texas, out tonight in fifth place. Vance just wasn't meant to be for him. That is right. The Texan getting lassoed out of here in fifth place. Going to take home 269000 Let's go see what he has to say. Uh, disappointment, of course. Um, just never really got things going. I really only picked up maybe two openers the whole time, and even those didn't go my way, obviously. So uh, just not real good luck tonight. It's time to say buenas noches to Brian, who's out in fifth place. But don't go anywhere. There's more action from the Seminole Hard Rock right after this. Tonight's episode is sponsored by Ublow, the official watch of the World Poker Tour. Welcome to El Bar. The El Bar is located upon arrival at the heart of the Seminole Hard Rock Hotel and Casino. It's a great place to hang out because it's sophisticated. It's, it's fun, it's elegant, there's a great vibe. It's, the menu is designed to have something for everybody, but 
in particular, your classics that are being rediscovered. May I offer you something to drink? Yes, please. Our most requested drink would probably be the Queens Park Swizzle. People love mojitos. We're in South Florida. You know, this little guy here, this is a, a swizzle stick. So that's the swizzle? And this is the swizzle. And then, of course, a little bit of bitters. Then we're going to put another little mint sprig on top there. Open it up. It's almost early. too pretty to drink. No. <laughs> Definitely you. enjoy it. Thank you. You're welcome. Wow, there's a lot of love and care at the L Bar. Well, Vance, I know you spend a lot of time at the L Bar yourself. How many of those drinks do you have? <laughs> Shh. <laughs> it is enjoyable. We got it all here. But let's go back down to the Fell Four players battling for this championship. Quick throw by Sean, and Andre's going to raise with Queen Jack to 450. Griffin out. And Joe Ebanks going to make the call with the ace five of spade out of the big blind. These two clashing a lot, seemingly. Yeah, ace five versus Queen Jack, and the flop is a nine eight six. Six of club, nine of diamond, eight of spade. Uh, Joe checks the gut shot straight draw and backdoor flush draw. And Andre seemingly always makes the continuation bet, doing so here with the Queen Jack. And what a call here by Joe with just ace high. Whoa, 625. Andre relentless. Let's go to the turn. It's a five. There's a possible straight on the board now, but it goes check, check. And yeah, down to the river seven. That gives both guys a straight, of course. Well, this is going to be a split pot if they both check it down. Three clubs on the board. Action is on Joe Ebanks. Great player, former dishwasher. He ain't washing dishes today. He's too good. He understands the situation. He knows if he bets here, his opponent just can't call him unless he's got at least a 10 in his hand. He's going to make a bet. 1.5 million. Yep, he's going to put the pressure on Crooks. And Bench, you just can't call on this spot when the best you can do is split the pot. Andre going out. Well done by Joe Ebanks there. Understood the situation. By betting, he wins the whole pot. Had he checked, at best, he would have got half of it. Well, you talk about the big names of the game, how great they are. And they are, but there's so many unknown quantities out here, like this table. Boy, these guys are playing great poker, stealing pots left and right. They're doing it with no hands. It's so impressive. Back down to the table, Joe. Quick fold by him, and now Sean with King Queen. He's going to make it 475,000 to go. Andre with the two ducks is going to make the call. Andre's going to call. Griffin with a nothing hand. Griffin folds. Folds his hand. So deuces versus King Queen. Let's do it. The you know, flop is Ace King Nine. Andre checks, and Sean checks. I like this check to control the size of the pot fence. You don't get check raised out of it. Seven comes off. And Andre with just the little deuces is going to take a bold step, make a bet, 650. And now you can call with the two kings. That's what he's doing. Go into the river. Andre feeling uncomfortable there. Jack on the river changes nothing. Well, two possible straights out there now. Uh, will Andre fire again? Yo, boys, getting the chips ready. I'll tell you, this guy's got heart, no doubt about it. There's a bet close to 1.4 million. Put the pressure on Sean. And that's when you have second pair in this spot, there's nothing you can beat but a bluff. And don't forget, he's on the short stack, but he's going to make the call. And Q is going to win this pot as Andre Crooks tried to steal another pot. He got picked off by the Q. Q ball straight into the rack right there. Don't go anywhere because Tony Dunst is breaking down play at tonight's final table. The raw deal is coming up when the Seminole Hard Rock Poker Showdown continues. At the table, it can sometimes be hard to distinguish the fish from the sharks. So let's leave it to our in-house Bassmaster Tony Dunst to hook, line and sink him in the raw deal.
As we've discussed before on The Raw Deal, most of the bluffs you'll make in poker will essentially be semi-bluffs, where you have equity to make the best hand. Right. We've just seen Andre Crooks make a pair of low equity bluffs. So, will he get out alive? Let's break it down. The first hand moves quickly. Sean Wynn raises from the button with pocket sevens, and Andre re-raises from the big blind. King Queen is likely ahead of Sean's button range, and three betting allows Andre to take the lead in the hand. So when the flop lands ace, nine, eight, that's exactly what happens when Andre bluffs out the sevens with a bet. Then Andre makes an even larger bluff against pro Joey Banks. He starts the hand by calling a raise in the small blind with ace eight offsuit, which is not a good idea. The queen four deuce flop doesn't help Andre, but he still check calls a bet from Joe. The six of spades hits on the turn that completes the only obvious draw on the board. After another check, Joe bets again, right. and Andre check raises just over the minimum. Admittedly, if I were in Joe's shoes, I'd probably think Andre has the nuts too. While the play works this time, I think that when Andre wants to bluff here, he should wait until he has a spade in his hand. Otherwise, he'll end up bluffing too frequently with no equity. And besides, there are few plays that look more daring and sexy than a zero equity bluff. If this was the movie version of this final table, Andre would lean back, light one up, and ask, was it good for you too? Well, Vince, all you gotta say is Andre smoked him with those bluffs so far tonight. Uh, well, right now you can see Griffin Paul <laughs> in California. He's the chip leader, 22 years old with 15 million. Let's go to the felt, a quick fold by Sean. Now Andre Crooks. Yeah, like the button raise with ace high here. Yeah, 475 to go. Griffin behind him with an ace six of diamonds. He's also got the sweatshirt up over his mouth, meaning he plays the pot. He's called it. And Joe Ebanks with it just a king three. Yeah, getting a lot of value here, at least in his mind, so he's gonna make the call. Three-way action and we're flopping. Here comes King Nine Five, two diamonds. So just like that, Joe's jumped out in front, but Griffin Paul has the nut flush draw and he is gonna bet. 675,000. Joe caught Kings there. Yeah, got top pair and he makes the call. Andre Nothing for Andre, so he gets out of the way. Going to the turn. Now a 10 of spade comes off, so possible straight out there, as well as possible flush in the making. Yep, and Griffin's gonna slow down and check. Ebank's not gonna play the top pair. Our diamond on the river pairs the board, but that gives a flush to our chip leader. Now, what to bet, what amount, you wanna get paid. Don't scare him out, 1.1. Yeah, that's a perfect size bet into a pot that's got 2.8 million in it, but it's too much. Joe Ebanks just quickly jettisons his hand, Vince, Certainly and did. he had top pair there. He checked on the turn, folded on the river. Well done by Joe. Like he could read right through those cards. Well, money saved is money earned, and Joe Ebanks did it there. All right, on to the next one. A quick fold by Griffin. Now Joe with a legitimate pair of nines. And he will raise the 450 right behind him. Sean with a pretty decent ace 10. It's really decent against an aggressive player like Joe Ebanks, who raises just about every hand on the button. Yep, he's gonna re-raise, Mike. 1.1, Andre out. Back on Joe. Now Joe is gonna four bet it here to 2.15 million. On. Now Sean's going back over the top, all in. And snap call by Joe. Both players playing very aggressive on this hand. Four and five betting it with these hands. So six days of play, it comes down to a race for Q. Can he win it and stay alive with the dream of winning a WPT title and a million bucks?
big moment here at the Seminole Hard Rock oh, Casino. Boy. They're chanting for an ace, Vince, in the Q section. A flop of a lifetime here for Q. Vince, you're right. There's one race they'll remember for a long time. Ooh. Nine still out in front. Jack 6-3 on the flop. Oh, a little moan out of the Q crowd there. They are looking for an ace or a 10. Everybody on their feet, holding their breath for the turn in the river. Fourth Street about to appear, and it's a four. Well, we are down to the river. Q must catch an ace or a 10 to stay alive in this tournament. Vince, if he hits one of those two cards, you're going to hear a scream that they'll be able to recognize from the Bahamas. Whatever it is, I did what I could. Oh, I just have to listen. I just have to listen. If it's silent, I win. This crowd is ready to go crazy. Here comes a river card. Is it an ace or a 10? That's what Q needs. Nope, it's a four. Joe Ebanks wins the race and knocks Sean Wynn out of the tournament. But Vince, what an effort by this kid. A local guy playing in his first ever big buy-in tournament. Comes in fourth. Just terrific. Sean Wynn. Big effort by him. Spectacular crowd loved him. But right now, he was just chopped up and thrown into the Everglades. Going to take home 323000 Let's go talk to him. With my stack, I can't just sit back and wait, you know? So I got to get it in there, you know? And plus, I played to win, you know? I, I did the best I could, you know? I'm happy with what, you know, fourth place. I'm happy with it. I want to play a lot more, man. Whenever you guys come around, I want to definitely go and play. With Sean Wynn out in fourth place, we end our second hour of coverage here at the Seminole Hard Rock Poker Showdown. Be sure to join us next time when we will brand the WPT Champions Cup with its newest member. Until then, for Mike Sexton, Vince Van Patten, Tony Dunst, the Royal Flush Girls and everyone at the World Poker Tour, I'm Lynn Gilmartin. See you next time on the WPT. I don't understand what this is for. <laughs> The World Poker Tour is sponsored by ClubWPT.com. Never lose a dime playing poker, guaranteed. We're back with more action from Hollywood, Florida and the Seminole Hard Rock Poker Showdown. Feeling like a million bucks. Here I am. Tonight in Hollywood, Florida, one of poker's most coveted titles is ready to be claimed. Hi everyone, welcome to the World Poker Tour, I'm Lynn Gilmartin. Making it to poker's biggest stage is a terrific memory, but to win it all is a moment of a lifetime. Here to take us home are the WPT's own Mike Sexton and Vince Van Patten. Well, Lynn, it's been a fun-filled, action-packed final table. But it's really no great surprise that the three guys fighting it out for the title are the three guys that came to this final table as the chip leaders, also the three guys that have been the most aggressive players at this final table. Current chip leader is Joe E. Banks. We've got Griffin Paul in second place, and Andre Crooks is in third place right now. That is right. Let's talk about Andre Crooks. He's a local. What a player he is. He likes to steal all these pots. He plays with absolutely nothing. Zip and pip. Very impressive so far. This is a great battle. Well, it looks like we are in for a real fight to the finish here at Seminole Hard Rock Hotel and Casino. Play is ready to resume, so let's check the chip counts and get down to the table. There you see the squirrel chip count. Joe Ebanks with 18.5 million, Griffin Paul with 16.7, Andre Crooks with 9 million. Yeah, winner's gonna take up a first prize of $1 million. The Annie's are 25,000. Blinds are 1 and 200. Here we go. Joe Ebanks, the former dishwasher with a big hand, ace king. Yeah, 29 year old, been a poker pro for 10 years. He's raised it to 450, full by Andre Crooks, the local. And now, Griffin Paul. He's got ace jack. Well, he's three bet it to 1.1 million. Ace jack, normally a very good hand in a three handed poker game, but not in this situation. Back on E Banks. Well, it's going to be four bet by him to 2.25 million. And now, will Griffin Paul be able to get away from this hand? That's the question. Or will he get himself in big trouble here? I can't believe I'm holding this. It's got a bad feeling. 
So, oh my God, it's ridiculous. Wow, well done by Griffin Paul. Vince, he lost about the minimum that you can lose with that hand playing three-handed poker. Good lay down by him. You're an animal. <laughs> and Joe Ebanks out of Ohio takes down that pot. He's made about 2.4 in his poker career. Pretty impressive. All right, back to the action. Andre Crooks, he's 30 years old, out of Lake Worth, Florida, right around here. He owns a used car lot, but I can tell you he's been very impressive with his poker here tonight. He quickly folds his hand, and now Griffin Paul with a 10-7. Seeing an opportunity, perhaps. And yes, he's going to raise it to 525. He banks, though, with an ace-5 behind him. And he's going to make the call. So the chip leader's going at it yet again. And flop 9-4 deuce. Joe has a gut shot straight draw action on Griffin. He has nothing. Yet he's going to bet a half million. Yep, he's got heart. That's what he has. Betting with 10 high. And quickly called by Joe. And now a jack comes off and three clubs out there. Neither player has a club in their hand. It's a bit of a scare card. Griffin does have a gut shot straight draw, but no club in his hand. He is going to bet this garbage. Yep, he's relentless. 925,000. And without a club in your hand, hard for Joe to go any farther. He gives it up, but power of aggression, winning that pot for Griffin Paul there. Very impressive. That's right. Griffin Paul used to play a lot of baseball in high school. Actually, he injured himself in college. And because of that, started playing poker and has done quite well. Moving on. Action's going to be right back on Griffin. First to act, he looks down at an ace four of clubs. Seems to like it, makes a raise. 400,000 Joe Ebanks with an ace 10, though. Well, he's going to three bet again here, this time to 1.2 million. Andre Crooks just watching the show here between these two guys. He's just hoping they clash in a really giant pot here soon. Yeah, he gets out of the way. Now Griffin going to make the call. So over 2.6 million in the pot already. Flop is an 8-5-4, so Griffin getting a piece of that with the fours. And the nut flush draw. That's right. Well, action's on Joe, though, and he checks. After three betting pre-flop, he checks on the flop. Griffin is going to bet the two fours and the nut flush draw. A little over a million. And Joe just jettisons his hand. So for an aggressive player like Joe Ebanks, he just didn't have the vibes on the flop, checked, and then folded. And with that pot, Vince, Griffin Paul back out in front. Joe Ebanks falls to second place, but not by much. All right, on to Andre Crooks, the local. Well, he's just been enjoying the show here so far in this three-handed battle, but He's looking to get involved himself, even though it's just with a 7-3. It's a button raise. 475. Griffin going to lay this one down. And now Joe with ace four of hearts makes this call. So ace four versus 7-3. Flop is a 9-6 deuce. The two clubs. And it goes check, check. Now the board pair of sixes. Joe checks. Again, Joe checks. And Andre realizes the only way he can win this pot is to bet at it, and that's what he's doing. 475,000. If you're Joe, you just couldn't imagine a six could help the guy. He didn't bet on the flop. Now he's betting the turn. You've got ace high. Well, Andre, his name is Crooks, and he's going to try to steal this one. And Joe gives it up. So it turns out to be a nice bet on the turn there by Andre as he takes down that pot. Learn poker at age eight. He just loves the game, the competition. He says he practices all the time, getting better and better. But let's get back down to the fellow Griffin Paul now with a quick fold. Joe Ebanks with a legitimate pair of nines. And he will raise it up, makes it 5.50 to go. So Andre Crooks looks down at two kings on the button. 
And courtesy of DraftKings, he'll get $1,000 added to his DraftKings account. But right now, he's looking to do a lot more damage than that. He is looking to double up here with these two kings. He is going to three bet it to 1.1 million. Now E Banks, wow, he's going to raise it again, Vance, to 2.3 million. Little does he know what he's up against. Andre started this pot with just less than 10 million. You know he's going to raise it, just a matter of how much here. At least I would think he would raise here, but. Let's see. Those big wired pairs in a three-handed poker game are 4.8. Few and far between, and yes, he's going to double it up again. So he bets about half his stack here. 4.8 million. What's that behind? Is Ebanks going to fall into the trap? All in. Call. And he's going to push all in, and a quick call, of course. And Andre Crooks in great shape to double up here. Two kings versus two nines. He has his opponent dominated. He's about a four to one favorite as the cards lie to win this pot. And Joe Ebanks is just thinking to himself, cold deck, cold deck, cold deck. That's how it happens. Don't think you can get away from the nines the way this has been going. And right now, Joe going to give back a lot of money. This would turn Andre into the new chip leader. Here's the flop. Oh, and nine on the flop. Unbelievable. Wow. Just heartbreak for Andre Crooks right there. That is like a dagger in your heart. You can't get a man in a better spot in terms of moving all in pre-flop. Just when you manipulate a man and you think you got him where you want him. Wow. That happens. Whoa. But it's not over. Andre could suck back out on him. Let's see if he can. Not there. Four of diamonds. Crowd absolutely stunned. We are down to the river, and Andre Crooks must catch a king. Nothing else will do. Here comes the river. Here it is. It's not to be for Andre. And a 10 comes off. That is just really, really tough luck for Andre Crooks. Got it all in with Kings. If he wins the pot, he's the big chip leader with three left. If he gets out drawn, he's out in third place. That's what happened. Joe Ebinks got lucky, out drew him. Andre Crooks, our third place finisher. That's a lot of pain for Andre Crooks. Going to take home 383,000. Let's go see what he has to say. I really wanted to win, bad. <laughs> Disappointing getting it in that well and that result, but uh, give it a, another go next time around. We have to move on, it's just like poker, next hand. What an impressive run by Andre Crooks, our third place finisher. It's now down to Joe Ebanks and Griffin Paul to battle it out for the title. There's plenty more to come before we name a WPT champion tonight, including Mike Vince and the Royal Flush Girls hitting the courts. Plus, Tony Dunst will stop in to give us the raw deal when coverage of the Seminole Hard Rock Poker Showdown continues. This episode of the World Poker Tour is sponsored in part by DraftKings. If you like poker and sports, then you're going to love daily fantasy sports at DraftKings. Go to DraftKings.com, enter promo code WPT, and start playing today. Heads Up Play is about to begin at the Seminole Hard Rock Poker Showdown between Joe Ebanks and Griffin Paul. The Royal Flush Girls, Jeannie and Tuba, have brought out the cold hard cash, plus a pair of monster 24K headphones and an amazing Ublo watch fit for a champion. Before play gets started, see what both players had to say during the break. Griffin, just 22 years old and here you are on poker's biggest stage. How does that feel? Uh, it feels amazing. Um, I'm speechless, honestly. Never thought this was possible. I uh, know you're going heads up against Joe, probably the one player at this table you didn't want to uh, play against. Definitely. He was, uh, I mean, he's been on my left the entire day and just giving me hell. So I haven't enjoyed it, but uh, I'm heads up, so I can't complain. It's going to be a good battle. Joe, you've been at a WPT final table before. Second chances don't come around too often. How is this one going to be different? Well, this time I've been much luckier, so hopefully that continues. Now, you are going into heads up with a nice chip lead, but you can't be too confident going up against someone like Griffin. Yeah, definitely, and we're both very deep. There's a lot of chips, so it's anyone's game. 
Well, Joe's right about that. <laughs> the average chip sack in this heads-up battle will be about 73 big blinds. Joe Ebanks out in front, 26.4 million. Griffin Paul, 17.7 million. Yep, and the Andes are 50,000 blinds, 153. Here we go. Action on Joe. He's got... 600. Just a 10-7, but he's going to make it 600,000 to go. That's the minimum raise. Griffin with a king six. Now, even though the hand doesn't look like much when you're playing heads up, you just can't throw away king highs every time your opponent makes a min raise. Yep, he's made the call, and the flop is a ace-10 deuce, so Joe hitting tens. But it goes check, check. And a 10 comes off on the turn, giving Joe three tens. Griffin checks. Yep. And Joe is reaching for betting chips. He's going to bet 700,000 is all. And because he didn't bet on the flop, no way Griffin is going to put him on a pair here. He's going to probably think his king high is the best hand. And he's going to make the call. Down to the river we go. It's a three of hearts. And again, Griffin checks. Those are $500,000 plaques. And it looks like he's getting out about seven of those three and a half million into a $2.7 million pot. And that's what Griffin does not understand. Why is he overbetting so much? Yep. The overbet actually seduces a little bit more because you're saying this guy's overbetting. He might be bluffing. It looks like a bluff. The pot only has 2.7 million. That's the guy bet 3.5 million. Oh boy, Griffin's called it. It's the size of that bet yep. that lured him in there, Vince. No doubt about it. Perfectly done. Griffin Paul fell into the hole. Well, Joe Ebanks widens his chip lead. I got started playing poker more than 10 years ago. I read in a newspaper about some guy winning $60,000 a year online, and I said, well, well, I was making $7 an hour, and I was like, well, if I can make $7 an hour clicking a button on my computer, I'd rather do that. And I learned basically any way I could. I, I read books, I watched videos, I talked to people, but the best way is by playing and, and learning from my mistakes. Ever since I've been a pro, people have always told me they want to see me on TV. And finally, now, 10 years later, I get a chance. It's like a dream. I wouldn't trade my job for anything. Throw away the dish rags. Now you're a poker pro. Mike, what was your first job? Well, other newspaper and cat in like most kids. My first paycheck job was a busboy in a restaurant, so I can relate to Joe. OK, Joe, this time with King Six, has raised to 600000 Griffin Paul with an ace three of diamonds just makes the call. We're going to see the flop. King, king, six. Oh! Joe has flopped a full house. How do you beat that? They both check real quickly. Going to the turn. Another six. Well, Griffin's got to think he's got the best hand now with two pair and a nice kicker, but he checks. Six. And Joe's going to bet this time. Not a big bet, just 600,000. If Griffin's going to call with the ace high, and I don't blame him the way the hand's been played, I'd call two there. Down to the river we go. It is a jack. Well, yeah, Griffin checks again. Ouch. Here come the plaques again. This time it's 1.2 million. And there you see the anguished look of Griffin Paul. You've got to be kidding me. I got tortured the last hand. Don't do it to me again. Well, he's made the call, two pair with ace high, but it's not good as Joe shows him the full house to take down the pot. Joe loving this moment. Well, the only consolation for Griffin Paul right now, even though he hasn't won a pot, is they both started with such deep stacks that he's still got plenty of chips to fight with. Joe Ebanks now moves over 32 million in chips. Griffin Paul with 11 million. Action right back on Joe. Ace five. Call. Call. Just calling. And Griffin has a pair of sevens. Well, Joe limping in on the button with ace high. Griffin's certainly going to raise now with two sevens. Makes it 925,000 to go. Uh, 
The total bet is 9.25. Total bet. And a snap call by Joe. Joe understands there's no way Griffin's going to put him on an ace here. So he's hoping to catch an ace on this flop. Let's see if he does. No, King Jack four. Well, it goes check, check on the flop. Now a nine comes off. Well, again, it goes check, check. Both players just happy to check it down. Six comes off on the river. I'm guessing it'll go check, check again. There's the first check. Wow, 400,000 betting to a two million pot. That is weird. Why would you bet ace high here, Vince? Ace high. Hmm? Ace high. <laughs> Griffin Paul is going to win this pot with two sevens. But in my mind, just a strange bet on the river when you could check it down with ace high. Back to the dishes for him after that one. Not yet. Don't go away because Tony Dunst is standing by to give us the raw deal when we return. It's that time of the night where Tony Dunst trades the swamp for the muck. Let's break down some of tonight's hands in this edition of The Raw Deal. Youngster Griffin Paul entered heads up play facing an uphill climb. And he isn't doing himself any favors by making a pair of high card call downs against Joey Banks, who's had the goods both times. So were those call downs a reasonable defense against an aggressive player, or just an expensive way for Griffin to see some cards? Let's break it down. The first hand between the two moved quickly. After raising pre-flop, Joe checked behind the flop with middle pair, then binked trips when another 10 landed on the turn. Griffin check calls a bet with king high, which leads to a three of hearts on the river that changes nothing. Griffin checks again, and Joe fires out a large bet of 3.5 million. I think that Griffin is aware that a bet of this size polarizes Joe's range between bluffs and big hands. Griffin must have thought he was bluffing, but if Joe wanted to bluff this hand, he would have simply bet the flop. In the next hand, it's Joe who's holding king six. After raising the button, he flops a full house and checks behind. The turn brings another six, and Griffin check calls a bet with ace high on the two pair board. And while I liked his turn call, I don't like his river call because yet again, I think Joe would have bet the uncoordinated flop if he was bluffing this hand. It's a rough way to start the match for Griffin, whose chance at a WPT title seems to be quickly slipping away. Not that you'd ever guess from watching his reactions. Well, certainly a tough start in this heads up battle for Griffin Paul, but I'm not sure you can be that critical about the last two calls that he's made, Vince, the way the hands were played. All right, right back down to the money pit. Action on Griffin Paul. And he is going to look down at a very attractive King Jack of Clubs. And he will raise to 600000 to go into Joe. Joe with the Garfunkel hand here, the 9 5 offsuit. He's going to three bet with it, Vince. Doesn't matter what to he To 1.6 million. 1. Just three bets with this garbage hand out of position. And now back on Griffin. Well, you're in position here with the King Jacket Clubs, but you're not liking it after getting three bet. But you are going to call it and look at a flop. All right. Junk hand versus quality hand. 9-5 versus King Jack. Let's go. And yeah, the flop is four, deuce, deuce. No help no. to either player. Well, Joe, who three bet before the flop, certainly going to bet this flop. And he does so. 1.2 million. Not the flop Griffin was looking for at all. 2.8. Wow, 2.8 million with just the king high here. This is playing bold. And he is going to win the pot. So great poker instincts there by Griffin Paul to take down that pot. This young kid has great feel for the